Hello friends. This is Fanfic Universe. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto had bloodline of destroyer with power of Sharingan, Rinnegan? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Naruto hurried into an alley, looking back at the huge mob that had chased him. He could see nearly all of the villagers had some sort of weapon. He slipped into another alley hoping to throw them off. He waited a bit as the crowd ran past. Naruto sighed in relief. He quietly walked out not noticing several shadows behind me. Die demon. Naruto heard. Naruto felt several kanais stab into him. He turned to see several ninjas and an anbu watch as he bled to death. Help me please, Naruto begged. Several ninjas began stomping on Naruto. One ninja made several hand seals and sent a burst of flames at Naruto, burning his body severely. Naruto fainted, only remembering that the ninjas had red eyes. Thank Kami the demon's dead, one of the ninjas said happily. You want to go for a drink Fugaku? No thanks. The Hokage will be angry that the demon died. I must be sober tomorrow to place the blame on those damned Hyugas, Fugaku answered. Itachi, dispose of the body. Yes sir, the Anbu said. The Anbu picked up the body and vanished. The Anbu was seething inside. How dare they disregard Yandaimi's last wish. Those damned foolish Uchihas. Only his mother, and a few other Uchihas understood that Naruto was a hero. Itachi hurried to the hospital and put a genjutsu on himself to prevent any other villagers from recognizing him. He ignored the front desk and went straight to the only doctor he knew that would help. Rin. Rin. Itachi called. They've done it again. Only worse. A woman came running toward Itachi. She had shoulder-length brown hair and two marks on her cheeks. She gasped at the damage Naruto suffered. How long ago? Ten minutes, Itachi answered. This child is lucky he has rapid regeneration. Half his wounds are closed but there's still massive internal damage and skin damage, Rin said. She sighed why didn't the villagers understand. She led Itachi to a bed. Itachi gently laid Naruto. Naruto's wounds were terrible. Nearly all his torso was burned black and his legs and arms were severely burned. His face was also burned. His back had several stab wounds and cuts. There were bruises all over his body. Rin began performing many jutsus and giving him ointments to speed up healing and prevent scarring. Itachi shook his head. Such an innocent child forced to accept this treatment day after day but he didn't hate the villagers but instead wanted their approval in their acceptance. That's why he made so many pranks and stole supplies from rich clan houses to give to the poor on the street. Itachi was disturbed from his reverie by the Hokage speaking. Itachi-san. Report. Hi Hokage-sama. Naruto was chased by a mob of villagers. They were egged on by many of the Uchiha clan. Naruto ran for an hour, the villagers numbering from 40 at the beginning of the chase to 100 at the end of the hour. Naruto managed to give them the slip. As soon as Naruto was out in the open, Naruto was attacked by several Uchihas, one of them was Fugaku. I was there also to try and save Naruto from dying. After the Uchihas stabbed, beat, and burned Naruto. I brought him here to be treated by Rin. Hokage nodded. Those damned Uchihas. They have been gaining too much power. There have already been several assassination attempts on him by ninjas hired by the Uchihas. He needed to wipe them out or severely limit their forces. Itachi, how many Uchihas are loyal to me? The Hokage asked. Around 50 including most of my family, some of my cousins and uncles, and others, Itachi answered. Good. Of the 50, how many do not hate Naruto? All of them. Many are neutral but there are some that openly like Naruto. Only Sasuke hates Naruto, thanks to my father brainwashing him. The Hokage stood up. Itachi stiffened when he saw the somber look on his face. Itachi. I'm going to offer you an SS class mission. It will be your choice if you want to accept it. Itachi was surprised. The last SS class mission was given to the Yandaimi to wipe out several battalions of Iwa Nins. To be offered this was truly an honor and a testament to how highly the Hokage viewed him. I accept. Are you sure Itachi? The Hokage asked. This mission will change your life forever. Itachi nodded. I'm sure. The Hokage nodded. Tomorrow night, I want you to kill every disloyal Uchiha. No disguises. 
you will be branded an S-class missing nin but I and the daimyo shall keep the hunter nins away from you. Essentially, you will become like a sanin but never be able to come back to the village again. Itachi was stunned. The merciful Hokage asking him to kill his own kinsmen and be in exile forever. Why? The majority of Uchihas have grown arrogant with power. I cannot do anything against them as the Hyugas, despite their dislike of the clans, will challenge any law strictly against the clan as it will apply to them. I already know the Fugaku has hired several assassins and some of his own clan members to kill me. I cannot allow that, they have become too dangerous. I fear that an alliance between Danzo and Fugaku will happen very soon, the Hokage explained. Itachi nodded. This is for the good of the clan and Konoha. Itachi was disgusted with many in the clan because of the arrogance yet laziness of many in the clan. They scoffed at hard work but adore cheating off their fellow comrades jutsus. I accept, Itachi said. The Hokage smiled proudly at the loyal ninja. He was sad that such an honorable ninja will have to be exiled but it was for the best of the village. Good. Now there is another part to this mission. I want you to escape with Naruto but let him return when you think he is ready. Teach him to become powerful beyond belief. He is and will become the hero as he was meant to be seen, the Hokage said. Itachi sighed. What a mission. Kill those arrogant kinsmen and also raise the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi. I accept. Tomorrow night, after you kill the Uchihas, I want you to sneak into the Hokage Tower and retrieve Naruto. Naruto will also have a letter you need to give to the Daimyo or the other Sanins that you are a friend of Konoha despite what the bingo book might have against you. The Hokage said. In this letter is also my permission for you to have an annual pay of 0.5% of the Konoha ninja budget. More than enough to raise Naruto and you. Itachi nodded. He bowed to the Hokage and vanished. The Hokage sighed. This knight will add so many years of burden on his shoulders. In Naruto's mind deep within Naruto's mind, there is a large cage sealing the Kayab in Naruto. The demon shook its head and began to repent for all the pain it had caused to the innocent. Despite human legends say, demons are not evil but the deliverers of judgment. Kayubi had meant to kill a snake called Orochimaru. It attacked Konoha sensing that vile snake's chakra. However, it was sealed into this boy and watched the boy be persecuted and despised by the villagers and ninjas because of the Kayubi. The Kayubi glowed as it morphed into a woman. The woman had reddish gold hair that reached down to just above her hip. She had a perfect figure and a face that was fit for a goddess. She clutched the bars of the cage holding her and whispered to herself. I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm bored. I, a teenager chanted as he walked down a dirt road. Enough damn it. We'll play I spy. A voice in his head screamed. The teenager chuckled. He knew she would agree if he annoyed her long enough. The teenager's name is Naruto, born of Konoha and host of Kayubi. He was around 5 feet 4 and had blonde, spiky hair with red highlights that could never be combed right. He wore steel-toed boots, loose black pants with plenty of pockets, and a black shirt with a small orange spiral on the front. He also wore a black vest and trench coat. A blood-red scarf hid the bottom half of his face. Hidden in various pockets were several storage scrolls, kanais, shurikens, exploding notes, a mask, and a small plushie of a fox. He also had a special sword placed behind his back. The sword was sheathed in a kodachi sheath but thanks to several seals, it can fit even though the blade was three feet long. Currently Naruto was on the way to Konoha at the orders of Itachi. Naruto had grown very fond of his surrogate brother. Itachi taught Naruto all he could. Itachi taught him the basics of being a ninja and showed him many ninjutsus and genjutsus. He also let Naruto get trained by several missing nins he trusted. One of them taught Naruto the basics of kenjutsu and assassination. Another taught him element manipulation and taijutsu. Kayubi also helped Naruto in several ways. She gave his body rapid healing, greatly increased stamina, and superhuman senses. She trained Naruto in controlling yokai chakra, very potent but powerful chakra. Her greatest gift was a choice of bloodline. Naruto had a very unique bloodline. It did not give him any more advantages against most ninjas. However, his chakra can damage the bloodline abilities of ninjas and made them worse. This meant that the Sharingan would only see after images of movements and the Byakugan would be blurred eye. It also meant that the Kagaya bones would be brittle and the Abarame family wouldn't be able to command their Kikai. Overall, those with bloodlines would be at Naruto's mercy. So Kit, what are you going to do once we get to Konoha? 
Kayubi asked. With Naruto's permission, Kayubi altered the seal so that she could see through Naruto's eyes and ears. She also altered the cage so it would be a large Japanese house instead of a sewer. Hum. I guess after I give the old man several letters and packages, I'll go walk around. Probably play several pranks Q chan Naruto replied. Ooh. Do tell, Kayubi cooed, Hokage Tower and Monument. This ought to be good, Kayubi said eagerly. Naruto reached the gate, he passed his papers to the guards. The guards scanned his papers checking for forgery. Business? The guard asked. Visiting a friend, Naruto answered. All right. Just don't cause any trouble, the guard grunted. Naruto nodded and began walking to the Hokage Tower. After walking for several minutes he decided to walk around for a bit like a tourist. He was amazed at the number of people and ninjas he saw. He did see some odd characters that Itachi warned him about. He saw a silver-haired man walking around, totally concentrated on an orange book he was reading. He turned and saw a purple-haired Kunoichi eating a huge number of dangos in a short amount of time. He chuckled a bit and accidentally bumped into someone. I'm sorry sir, I didn't look. Yosh. Your flames of youth are burning brightly. If I cannot match your flames of Y-O-U-T-H-E, I will hop 50 laps around Konoha on one hand, the person Naruto bumped into shouted. Naruto took one good look at the man and bolted away as fast as he could. He headed into an alley and hid. He didn't speak for several minutes. Q, was that the result of eating too much ramen? Naruto asked nervously. Kayubi couldn't answer. She was stunned that a human would go out in public looking that bad. Q? Kit, you never saw that man. It was a bad dream, Kayubi said. Agreed, Naruto said. He went out from the alley and headed to the Hokage Tower. Naruto entered the building and went to the receptionist. Excuse me. I have a letter for the Hokage that is very important, Naruto said politely. He handed a letter to the receptionist. The daimyo and the Hokage stamped the letter. Naruto waited as the receptionist delivered the letter. Soon, the receptionist motioned for Naruto to follow her. Naruto followed her until they reached the Hokage's office. Naruto steeled himself and entered. Naruto, a voice said in delight. Naruto looked up to see Rin hug him tightly. Very tightly. The Hokage watched in amusement as Naruto turned blue. Help me, Naruto gasped at the Hokage. The Hokage chuckled. Let him down Rin. I want to hear what happened while he was away with Itachi, the Hokage said. Rin pouted but let Naruto go. Naruto jumped out Rin's arm length and began recounting what happened during his six years with Itachi. Not to be mean or anything but I won't tell what happened just yet. There are several people that I do not want to reveal. So when I arrived here, I walked around a bit and saw several ninjas. One of them scared me more than Kayubi during that time of month, Naruto said. Hey. Though now I think about it, you're right, Kayubi said. Oh yeah. I met Aero Senen during my travels and he told me to give you this book. Naruto handed the Hokage a small gold book. The Hokage gasped. Naruto, is that? The Hokage gasped. Naruto shrugged. If you mean the latest book of the Icha Icha series, Icha Harem Knights in a limited gold edition and signed by the author with extra bonus pictures, then yes it is. Rin glared at the Hokage as he opened it reverently. Naruto could have sworn that the book emitted some gold light when it was open. The Hokage started to giggle and blush. Naruto sweat dropped. Were all men perverts? And what is with that book? Even Itachi began giggling and blushing when he read that book. Oi, Oyaji. What now? Naruto asked rudely. The Hokage closed his book regretfully and thanked Kami for Jiraiya. You will be going to the academy where you will take the Genin exam and take place on a team. There you will work with your new team until you become Chunin rank, the Hokage stated. Nani. Naruto yelled. No buts Naruto, the Hokage said firmly. Now Naruto, you'll be staying in an apartment that I bought for you. You will also get a weekly stipend until you reach Chunin. The Hokage tossed Naruto the keys to the apartment. Rin. Please show Naruto the way to the academy. Also tell Iruka that he is to be allowed to take the Genin exams, the Hokage said. Rin nodded. When they left, the Hokage took out his book. Now for some quality reading. Iruka was having a bad day. It was the day before the Genin exams. He looked at his class. If you can call it that. 
In one section of the room where the Uchiha fangirls are staring at the heir of the Uchiha clan, Sasuke. After Itachi's massacre of over 400 Uchihas, young Sasuke has been obsessing over revenge. Even his own mother, Makoto, could not persuade Sasuke against being an avenger. Sadly, she died a year after the massacre, making him fall into an even deeper madness. He was the top of his class but Aruka worried for his sanity. It reminded him of one of the sanin he read about. Aruka shook his head. He turned his attention to two girls, Yamanaka Ino and Haruno Sakura. Both girls were diehard Uchiha fangirls and honestly, a disgrace amongst Kunoichis. Always focusing on their looks instead of training. Dieting too. At twelve? Do they want to kill themselves? Nearby were Nara Shikamara and Akamichi Choji. These two were heirs to the Akamichi and the Nara clans. Both have the sum of the lowest grades in class. However, Aruka knew they were hiding their true abilities judging by their father's lack of concern about their grades. Aruka had to admit. Their fathers seemed like older versions of their sons. Both Naris both said troublesome and started to sleep. The Akamichis shrugged and ate their potato chips. In another section were Inazaka Kiba, and his pet, Akamaru, and Hanada Hayuga. Both of these ninjas were extremely competent and ready to be genin. However they had personality problems. Kiba was wild. He needed to settle down and not act on his instincts. He needed to use his brain more often and focus on some long-range genjutsus to complement their unique taijutsu. Hanada was perfectly capable in Aruka's eyes. She was proficient in the Byakugan and gentle fist. However in Lord Hiyashi's eyes, she was weak. This led to severe inferior complex in Hanada. However, she had an extraordinary talent in healing as she developed a healing cream that healed a cut at an extremely fast rate. In a corner by himself, Abarame Shino was silently observing the class. Aruka never knew if the boy was sleeping or not. Aruka noted that he was an extremely gifted person in strategy and logic. He was also skilled in tracking and stealth. A true ninja. He hid his skills from most of the class. In Aruka's opinion, if Shino and Sasuke got into a fight, Sasuke would lose. Aruka sighed. Well better start the lesson. Troublesome, Aruka muttered. He stood up and said, all right class, settle down. No reaction. A tick mark appeared on Aruka's face, shut up and pay attention. The class settled down enough for Aruka to start his lesson. Good. Now today, we'll be going over different ninja villages. Now can anyone tell me the five major ninja villages? The door opened and Aruka turned to see who it was. A boy around most of his students' age walked in. He sighed as many of the girls commented on his hotness compared to Sasuke Uck. The boy smiled and gave him a slip of paper. Here you go Scarface. It's a letter from the Hokage, the boy said cheekily. Aruka was a bit annoyed but read the letter. He was a bit surprised when the Hokage said that Naruto has permission to take the genin exams this late in the school year. All right Naruto. Please sit in the seat next to Sasuke over there, Aruka said. Naruto looked over to where Aruka was pointing. You mean over there next to that emo homo with the chicken ass hair? Naruto asked revolted. The class was in an uproar. All of Sasuke's fangirls demanded punishment and retribution while Kiba fell on the ground laughing. Choji chuckled a bit and carried on eating. Shino looked on in interest. Shut up. Aruka yelled. He turned to Naruto. Fine. Please sit next to Shino over there. Naruto walked to the seat beside Shino without any complaint. He stuck a hand out to Shino. Uzumaki Naruto at your service. Shino eyed his hand then shook it. Abarame Shino. So you're one of the famous Abarames. My sensei told me about them. In my opinion, they are some of the finest ninjas around. Stealthy and they quickly finish their mission without having to waste much energy. Epitome of a ninja's role. Shino was stunned. Not many people praise their clan as highly as the Hayuga or Uchiha. This was truly a pleasant surprise. You use Kikai bugs to aid in your fights, right? Naruto asked. You seem to know a lot about my clan, Naruto-san, Shino said. So? Knowing your enemy and battling your enemy is two completely different things. If the body is not strong enough to counter what the mind views as a threat, then you're dead, Naruto countered. A wise statement, Shino said. He was impressed. A new student so wise in the ways of the shinobi, it would be beneficial to be his friend. All right class. Out in the training field for sparring. Aruka called out. 
The class calmly went out to the practice field. Aruka had them go to one of the practice arena. Now class, time for some practice sparring. You can use any taijutsu techniques or kenjutsu, Aruka explained. Now anything goes except serious injury or death. Now let's have Shino and Ino spar, Aruka called out. The two went into the arena. The match was a short one as Shino quickly delivered a knockout punch to Ino's temple. Aruka's sweat dropped to how short the match was. All right, how about Sasuke and, Aruka called out. I want Naruto, Sasuke said. Everyone looked at Naruto. I'm flattered but I don't swing that way. Naruto smirked as the Uchiha flushed in embarrassment. He saw Kiba laughing on the ground and many fangirls screaming obscenities. Just get over here and fight me, Sasuke said. Naruto shrugged. He calmly faced the Uchiha. Aruka sensei. Do you cave a Bakken? Naruto asked. Sure, Aruka answered. He tossed Naruto a standard wooden Bakken. Naruto caught it deftly and twirled it a bit testing the balance. Satisfied, Naruto went into a sword stance with the Bakken positioned like a sheathed sword. Whenever you're ready, Sasuge, Naruto said. Sasuke rushed Naruto. He threw a punch at Naruto's head. However Naruto easily dodged it and smacked Sasuke hard with the Bakken on his thighs. Sasuke's kegs buckled as a numb sensation went through his legs. Sasuke threw a roundhouse at Naruto. Naruto quickly ducked and slammed the Bakken at Sasuke's other leg. Sasuke fell down hard when he knee buckled from the force of Naruto's blow. Sasuke scrambled up, angry at Naruto toying with him. Sasuke became even angrier as Naruto began walking out of the ring. Where are you going Dobi? Scared. Nope bored. You're too riled up to be a challenge. Naruto answered cheerfully. He gave Sasuke the victory sign. To say Sasuke was angry was like saying spandex was a bit ugly. Sasuke was furious. Kaden. Great fireball. A large fireball flew toward Naruto. Aruka formed seals for a water jutsu as it headed toward Naruto. Naruto ignored it until it was a meter. He thrust the Bakken at the fireball. Kenjutsu. Bullet, a blast of air blew through the fireball and struck Sasuke in the head. Sasuke flew out of the ring, landing three feet away from where he was standing. Naruto glared at the Uchiha. His brother would be ashamed of him. Naruto looked back to see Kiba and Choji applauding him while Shikamaru gave him a small approving smile. Shino nodded approvingly at Naruto's skill. Iruka was impressed. To disperse a fireball with only the wind from a sword thrust needed a lot of skill. It even had enough power to blow his opponent away with only a Bakken. Aruka wouldn't he want to be on the receiving end if Naruto had a katana. Aruka sensei. Sakura shrieked. Naruto cheated. Sasuke wouldn't be defeated like that. Naruto must have used a ninjutsu to beat Sasuke. Rematch. Naruto's eye twitched. Kami. How can someone like her be that stupid? Naruto thought. One of life's greatest mysteries, Kit, Kayubi said. She was appalled at how stupid the girl was. Sakura, Naruto fought fair and square. He defeated Sasuke without resorting to using a ninjutsu techniques. Sasuke on the other hand directly disobeyed me and fired a katenjutsu at Naruto's back, Aruka explained patiently. Nu uh. Sasuke never fired a fireball. That was Sasuke's awesomeness radiating from him, Sakura screamed. That sets a new low for being retarded, Naruto thought. Kami. She's even more imaginative than the people who invented singing, Kayubi thought. Miniclip four cavemen were sitting around the fire. Grunt, 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 grunt. Oh, oh, oh for the longest time oh, oh, oh for the longest time, they all sang in unison. If you said goodbye to me tonight. Ooh ooh ooh, one sang. End miniclip. Naruto shrugged. He wasn't going to argue over this. He went over by Shino to watch the other matches. Kiba, Choji, and Shikamaru joined him. Great match Naruto, Kiba congratulated. I'm Kiba of the Inazaka clan. And this is my pet, Akamaru. Akamaru yipped at Naruto. Where did you learn to fight like that? Kiba asked. A friend of my sensei, Naruto answered. You think I can get a few tips? Kiba asked. Learn a few genjutsus. Genjutsus? Why? You use mainly taijutsu in battle. If your opponent is in a genjutsu, you can easily maul your opponent before they realize it, Naruto explained. Kiba nodded. 
Soon after all the sparring was done, Naruto spent time with his new friends. He learned a lot about the village, people, and places of the village. After school they went to a barbecue restaurant. They spent hours there laughing and joking. Despite Shino being the silent one, Shino could make really funny one-liners and observations. Soon it was late. They split the check four ways and left. Naruto went to the address the Hokage gave him. It led to an apartment complex that was shared by many ninjas of Konoha. Let's see. Number 726, 724, 725, 726. Here it is. Naruto unlocked it and went in. The apartment was a decent place. It had two rooms, a bedroom, a kitchen, fridge, two closets, and a bathroom. It was empty. Naruto had a remedy to this. He took a scroll out of his jacket and placed chakra in it. Soon a couch, bookshelf loaded with books and scrolls, a futon, kitchen equipment, clothes, training equipment, a chest, ninja equipment, food, soap, and other stuff popped out. Naruto then created several shadow clones to organize all the items. As soon as they finished, Naruto dispelled them. He went to the chest and opened it. Inside was cleaning equipment for his sword. He removed the sword from his belt and cleaned it carefully. The sword was nothing fancy. It was like most katanas except that it was made by one of the finest blacksmiths. It was extremely sharp, durable, and can channel his chakra. This allowed him to make his kenjutsu attacks long range when he channeled his wind chakra through it. Also any cuts with his sword would damage bloodline abilities. It also had an element of surprise that his sword was sheathed in a kodachi sheath. Naruto sheathed his sword and laid on his futon. He was excited to see what tomorrow would bring in this village. Things already looked very interesting. Naruto closed his eyes but opened them when he heard his next door neighbor. Naruto groaned but got up. He had this weird dream about some black haired girl. Whatever, dreams are dreams, Naruto groaned. He scratched his stomach but paused. No, not that. Ooh. What have we here? Kayubi cooed. Looks like someone had a wet dream. Shut up. Naruto yelled. He went to the bathroom for a long cold shower. After he finished drying his hair, Naruto put on some shorts and a loose t shirt. He took his sword and storage scroll but nothing else. He quickly tied his shoes and weights on. These weights are tied to his limbs. Each of the weights weigh around a 300 pounds. Kayubi, could you please activate the gravity seals to 5x? Naruto asked. Fine, Kayubi said. Naruto felt his body sag as the gravity seals increase from 4x to 5x. He jogged around getting used to the new weight. Thanks to Kayubi's training, his body has literally become so dense that his body is as hard as stone and his bones harder than steel. He put his hands into a seal and gathered chakra. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, 200 clones popped into existence. I want a hundred of you to work on chakra control. Fifty of you find a training ground and spar using Kenjutsu and Taijutsu, blindfolded. The other fifty will work on sealing. I want those improved explosive notes by the end of the week, Naruto instructed. After two hours, dispel yourselves. The clones nodded and dispersed to do their work. Naruto did a few stretches and began his morning run. According to Kiba's information, Naruto needed to do 50 laps around Konoha before his normal training. Naruto started jogging. It was peaceful to hear the birds sing in the early morning and feel the fresh wind of a new day. Quiet. Tranquil. Perfect. Lee. It is time for our youthful morning run. If we cannot make a hundred laps before the sun rises, then we will walk all day on our hands. Oh god damn it. Why does he seem to show up everywhere? Hi sensei. And if we cannot do that, we will spread the wisdom of youthfulness while we are in the springtime of youthfulness. Naruto knew he shouldn't have turned but against his common sense, he looked behind him. Not only was the weirdo with the spandex, huge eyebrows, and bowl cut there but he also had a mini-me. The mini-me was dressed like the weirdo also. But the freakiest part was that they were hugging. Very tightly. What? It's not enough that he's a weirdo but he also had to corrupt a child into dressing like him and allowing the weirdo to molest the child? Guy Sensei. Lee. A huge background with the sun setting and the waves crashing appeared behind them. Naruto had several ticks but calmly made the seal for dispelling Genjutsu. Kai, Naruto said. Nothing. Kai. Nothing. Kai. Still nothing. Kai. 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 Naruto screamed. 
he couldn't dispel the jutsu. Run for it Kit. Run for our lives. Kayubi screamed. Naruto began running faster than he ever thought possible. He ran to the Hokage Tower screaming. He sped past the receptionist and straight into the Hokage's office. The Hokage was enjoying his Icha harem book when the door to his office blew up. He watched in shock as Naruto blocked the door with an earth jutsu, made multiple reinforcing seals, and traps. Naruto then grabbed the Icha harem book from the Hokage, sat in a corner, and began reading as fast as he could. Naruto suffered massive blood loss in a matter of seconds and blacked out. Naruto. Are you alright? The Hokage asked, worried. Spandex. Eyebrows. Minimi. Youth. Sunset, Naruto whispered. The Hokage sweat dropped. No one was the same when they met Guy or Lee. Naruto woke up after two hours. He was lying on the sofa in the Hokage's office. He looked up to see the Hokage hard at work with paperwork. He also heard the Hokage cursing the paperwork. Goddamned paperwork killing me more painfully than a stab wound, the Hokage moaned. The Hokage looked up and saw that Naruto was conscious. Ah Naruto you're awake, the Hokage said. Naruto nodded but was a bit confused. Why was he in the Hokage's office? And why did the Hokage have a rock slab with traps and seals for a door? He asked the Hokage both questions. The Hokage sweat dropped. Naruto don't you remember? Naruto tried to remember but found Kayubi locking a huge chest labeled ideas for genjutsu horrors. Kayubi. What happened two hours ago? Naruto asked. You're better off not knowing, Kayubi said curtly. Nope, don't remember, Naruto said to the Hokage. The Hokage sweat dropped and suddenly remembered an article about how the human psyche will bury traumatic memories. Naruto, you should be getting back home. The academy starts in an hour. By then you'll have the genin exams, the Hokage said. The Hokage sighed and went back to his paperwork. You're right, Naruto exclaimed. He made a seal for Sunshin but stopped. Don't you have a quicker way of doing paperwork? Naruto asked. The Hokage looked up so fast that Naruto thought he heard the Hokage's crack. Do you know of a way? The Hokage asked. Naruto nodded. Have you tried Cage Bunshin? Naruto asked. Naruto left by Sunshin. The Hokage was in shock. He slowly got out a slip of paper that his students gave to him years ago. On it was a circle. In the circle, it said, bang head here. Stupid. 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 Stupid, the Hokage said, while hitting his head on the slip of paper on his desk. Naruto arrived at his apartment just as all his clones dispelled. He was a bit disoriented by the flood of information. After a minute he reviewed all of the information gathered. He nodded in approval at the progress he made. He quickly bathed and changed back to his regular clothes. He wrapped his scarf around the bottom of his face to hide the marks on his cheeks. It would not be good if people knew the Kayubi Jinchuriki was back. He packed his necessities inside scrolls and strapped his sword on his belt. After checking his equipment, he headed toward the academy. Naruto passed through the market square. The air was filled with the smells of delicious foods. He heard his stomach growl loudly and decided to head to a nearby dango stall. The stall was a bit crowded but homely. Naruto sat at an empty table and ordered some dango and tea. After the waiter gave Naruto his order, Naruto eagerly dug in. He finished one and was about to pick up another when he felt someone's presence behind him. Anko Mitarashi was hungry after training so she decided to head to the dango shop for dango and sake. As she entered, she saw a teen with a full plate of her favorite dango. She decided to take one. Surely, a teen wouldn't deny a tokabetsu janin. She skillfully reached for one. She would have stolen one if a glowing katana weren't tickling her throat. TCH, TCH, TCH. Didn't your mother teach you any manners? Naruto asked. He turned to see Anko glaring at him. Now, if you ask politely, I'll order another one. Anko was about to tell the teen an explicative, but her stomach growled loudly. Who cares about pride when your stomach is concerned? I'm Anko Mitarashi, Konoha's wise snake mistress, she said. Now, could you please bet me an order of dango? Naruto ordered more dango. As she waited for the dango, Naruto began a friendly conversation. Anko and Naruto talked about various things. She was curious how Naruto detected her presence and how Naruto was able to move so fast. Naruto deftly steered the conversation away from him to her. He was able to by telling her that he was an academy student. No way. 
I was nearly killed by an academy student, Anko exclaimed. If it's any consolation, I've been taught by many good teachers, Naruto said consolingly. Anko grumbled a bit and viciously bit into a dango. Yeah well, how's Aruka doing? Anko asked. Why? Isn't he's just an instructor, Naruto asked. Anko shook her head. Not just an instructor but was a distinguished Anbu under the name of Isamu. Held a record number of completed solo missions, however, he always wanted to be an instructor. He even turned down a chance to be one of the twelve guard ninjas of fire. The daimyo's elite Hokage allowed Aruka to be an instructor. Ever since Aruka became an instructor, genins of his class tend to pass the Jonin's personal test. They often become chunins in three years, Anko explained. She had a light blush on her face. You know a lot about him, Naruto said. He smirked a bit when Anko squirmed in her seat. He sniffed the air and found the air soaked with hormones coming from Anko. Naruto had a shit eating grin on his face. Anko got suspicious. What are you smiling about? You like Aruka, don't you? Naruto teased. He grinned even wider when Anko blushed a deep red. Anko? Naruto turned to see a Jonin with red eyes and long dark hair standing outside the entrance of the shop. She had a look of complete surprise on her face. She went to their table and sat by Naruto. Anko, I heard the last sentence. Do you really like him? The Jonin asked gently. Anko nodded and began crying. Anko sniffed. She hated to be seen as weak. This damn brat was able to break down her defenses in less than an hour. She was a torture ninja for Kami's sake. She should have seen this a mile away. Yeah, Kuranai, I do. I've been in love with him since a year after Orochimaru left. He was my best friend after Orochimaru left. In the years he's always been there to cheer me up, help me stand tall, and never treated me like an outcast. I've been too afraid of rejection or the chance of persecution against Aruka to admit my feelings. Anko whispered. Kuranai squealed and began saying how romantic that was to fall in love with your best friend. Naruto felt a bit sick he should have never pried into these private feelings. It made him sick. It was worse because Kayubi in his head was saying the exactly the same thing. Kawaii. Kuranai, Kayubi squealed. Naruto gagged. After a long talk, Kuranai cheered Anko back to her normal self. Naruto was forced to sit through it because Kayubi threatened him. He looked outside and remembered he should go to the academy now. Well it was nice to meet you, but I have to go to the academy. Naruto was about to run off when a hand shoved a package in Naruto's pocket. Make sure Aruka gets that, Anko said mischievously. Naruto nodded and ran to the academy. He arrived in the classroom just as the bell rang. Morning Aruka sensei, Naruto said. Morning Naruto. Please sit down while I call roll, Aruka said. Naruto began walking toward his seat by Shino. He stopped though when he remembered about the package. Aruka sensei. A Janin gave me a package and told me to give it to you. She said it was important, Naruto said. He tossed the package to Aruka. Aruka caught it and went to his desk. He sat down and opened it. Naruto and Kiba began sniggering loudly when the package opened to reveal a stained pair of panties and a picture. Many girls began to shout at Aruka for being a pervert while secretly planning to do the same thing for Sasuke. Aruka was bright red. Many of the students were shocked to see their teacher receive something like that. It didn't help when the Hokage dropped in. Aruka, I wanted to talk to you about the Genin examinations and ooh. The Hokage said as his eyes spotted the panties in the picture. The Hokage smiled lecherously. So what bold lady sent you this lovely package? Aruka hastily hid the package in his desk and tried to appear as if nothing happened. Hokage-sama, what about the exams? The Hokage cleared his throat and tried to recollect his thoughts. Aruka, I have been reviewing the Genin exam and after consideration, they will be sorted into teams now and be tested tomorrow by the Jonin senseis. The Hokage gave Aruka a list and exited. Aruka looked at the list and was surprised. In the past, the students have been sorted into specialty teams such as tracking, capturing, and assault. Now the teams are much more balanced with much more of variety. All right. Now the Genin exams are cancelled today, Aruka announced. He waited as the students began booing, after a minute the booing stopped and Aruka continued. Under the new system, students will be sorted into teams to take a much harder test. The test is a practical mostly and will occur at the time the Jonin chooses, Aruka explained. Now the teams and Jonin senseis are as follows. Team 1 includes 
Naruto tuned him out until his name was called. Team 7 will be Naruto, Aruka called. Naruto sat up, eager to find out his other teammates. Shino. Naruto grinned as Shino shifted a bit. And Shikamaru. Naruto punched the air with his fist. Shikamaru mumbled troublesome and went back to sleep. Team 7's Jonin will be Anko Mitarashi. Naruto began praying to Kami for mercy. Ah shit. I'm dead, ain't I Q? Naruto asked. After Aruka dismissed the class, he asked Naruto to stay a bit after class. Naruto waited as the rest of the students whispered explanations for why Naruto was being held after school. Naruto wondered if it was something about Anko. After everyone left, Aruka spoke. Naruto will you come here? Naruto walked to Aruka's desk. Aruka was holding Anko's package. Naruto sighed. Is this about the package sensei? Naruto asked. Aruka turned red. Yes but there's another reason why I asked you to stay, Aruka admitted. Naruto sighed. This was going to be a long afternoon. Naruto. Why did Anko give you this package? Naruto shrugged. I don't know really. I just met her in a dango stall this morning. She tried to steal my dango. Aruka nodded. Tried? I tickled her neck with my sword, Naruto explained. Anyway, after offering to buy her an order of dango, we started talking. You have quite an impressive record for an academy teacher, Isamu. Aruka blushed embarrassed. Yeah but I always wanted to teach. She spoke very highly of you Aruka, Naruto said. Is it true that you two were roommates? We were for a bit, Aruka admitted. After Orochimaru deserted Konoha, she was treated like a traitor. I never believed it and felt sorry for her. She kind of clung to me a bit while she got used to the glares and insults. I often had to sleep in the park so that she won't be alone. Anko's landlord soon kicked Anko out of her apartment. She didn't have friends like Kuranai yet and her other friend Hannah lived in a clan house. She went to me and I allowed her to stay at my apartment. She stayed for several months until she got her own apartment. Sensei. I was lying when I asked about the roommate's part, Naruto admitted. Aruka turned a darker shade of red when he realized Naruto tricked him. Aruka. What do you think of Anko? Naruto asked. Um well she is kind and gentle despite her normal attitude. After you get past her shell, she is a beautiful caring person that any man would love. I count myself lucky to be her friend, Aruka said. There's not a trace of a lie, Kayubi noted. Hey kid. This man really loves Anko. Look at his eyes. They practically glow. Naruto nodded. He noticed this also. He decided to test Aruka. Aruka. As I talked with Anko, she told me she had a boyfriend. Aruka looked at Naruto. A new boyfriend? Yeah, some junin named Kakashi, Naruto said. Naruto sensed some killing intent waft from Aruka. Anyway from what I heard, Kakashi's been a real jerk. He's been ignoring her and despite her pleas, he's been flirting with some of the women in the village, Naruto said. Naruto smirked as Aruka was glowing with killing intent. He decided to push him a little bit more. The worst part is, he forbid her from telling any of her friends that she is forcibly engaged. She cries to sleep most nights, Naruto said sadly. He was blasted back as Aruka's chakra let out a pulse, breaking chairs and his desk. Kakashi. Aruka growled. He pulled out a beautifully made katana. You're dead. Aruka jumped out the window carrying his katana with him. Naruto chased after him, his face split into a mischievous grin. Kakashi was exiting a bookstore eagerly reading his purchase, Icha Harem Knights. He turned around a corner and ignored a shout. Kakashi, my eternal rival. Why do you read that UNYOUTHFUL book? I challenge you to a race around Konoha with a boulder on our backs. Hum. Did you say something? So hip my eternal rival. Kakashi. Kakashi turned around to see Aruka charge at him with a drawn katana. Kakashi dodged it but Aruka's sword sliced the book into pieces. Kakashi stared at the book in horror. My ICHA ICHA. I shall avenge thee. Kakashi yelled. He used a kanai to parry Aruka's katana. Aruka channeled chakra into the sword and the katana sliced through the kanai like butter. Aruka stabbed Kakashi but Kakashi turned into a log. Aruka stabbed the ground with the katana and quickly made some seals. Chakra pulse. A wave of chakra rippled the earth around Aruka. Kakashi was forced out from underground. Aruka swung his katana at Kakashi who managed to dodge it. Why did you hurt Anko? 
Aruka roared as he attempted to cut Kakashi in half. What? Kakashi said as he ducked Aruka's katana. You heard me. You womanizer. Aruka yelled. Aruka made some seals. Sweden. Water darts. Kakashi swerved to avoid several darts of ice that Aruka shot at him. Kakashi made several seals as he dodged another of Aruka's stabs. Kaden. Fire sparrows. Several birds made of fire flew toward Aruka. Aruka channeled chakra through his sword and sliced through the birds. You hurt Anko. You were engaged with her and still kept flirting, Aruka roared. That is most unyouthful my eternal rival. I must see lease your unyouthfulness and show you the joys of springtime of youth. Guy shouted. Naruto saw the mini-me pop out of nowhere. Gai sensei. Lee. The evil genjutsu popped out again quickly stopping the fight for a second because everyone was transfixed on it. Meanwhile, Anko was heading out of the dango shop. She headed toward the market for some sake. She had a feeling she would need some tonight. As she headed to the market, she felt a large chakra source surge near her. She headed toward the source to check it out. She saw Aruka fighting Kakashi equally. Aruka was using his sword to keep Kakashi on the defensive and preventing any ninjutsu. She also heard Aruka shouting something at Kakashi. Why did you hurt Anko? She deserves someone better than you, Aruka bellowed. She is the most wonderful person I know and I will never make her cry. Kakashi was confused as hell. What the heck was Aruka yelling about? He dodged another swipe from Aruka's sword when snakes wrapped around him, tying Kakashi up. Aruka? Aruka turned to see Anko. She had a blank face. Aruka got extremely nervous. Did she hear all that? Aruka. Did you mean all that? Anko asked. Uh. 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 Aruka stammered. He looked down. Yeah I did. Aruka's head was lifted up by Anko's gentle finger. She looked into his eyes searching for any traces of lying. All of it. Every single word Anko, Aruka said. Anko smiled and at Aruka as hard as she could. Aruka happily returned the. Naruto stood on the sidelines, watching the couple he was honestly happy for the couple. Itachi had said they've been dancing around each other for a while. It was time they both received happiness. Guy and Lee were sobbing and shouting about Aruka's and Anko's blazing fires of youth. Kakashi was still confused as hell and wanted his Icha harem knights repaired. Many of the women who watched the scene thought it was romantic, including Kayubi. Many of the men thought Aruka was lucky to have such a hot girlfriend. In the Hokage Tower, the Hokage was furiously riding down the scene from his crystal ball. He was giggling lecherously and excited to see what Jiraiya would make from this information. When the two stopped for a breath, Anko giggled. She whispered in Aruka's ear. Naruto wasn't able to pick it up but was able to make an accurate guess as to what it was considering Aruka's red face. The two stood up and left, leaving a shouting guy and Lee, a confused Kakashi, and a happy Naruto. Naruto headed home pleased to give two deserving people happiness. It would also make his genin exam easier tomorrow. He headed toward the clan houses to visit his teammates. Naruto asked several civilians where the Abarames and Nara clan houses were. He was able to find directions from a chunin and headed to the Abarame first. He headed toward the Abarame clan house. The house was big but not humongous like the Hyuga mansion. It was quiet but Naruto was able to hear humming sounds like insects. He knocked on the front door and waited. A ninja dressed like Shino opened the door. How may I help you? I'd like to speak to Shino Abarame about the genin exams tomorrow, Naruto said politely. The ninja nodded. Please follow me into the living room. Naruto followed the Abarame into a large airy room where several people were studying or meditating. Naruto saw a person watching his bug collection. The ninja turned to Naruto. Please wait here while I see if Shino is available. Naruto shrugged and sat down on one of the cushions around the living room. He took out a scroll about ceiling and began to read. After five minutes, Shino greeted him. Hello Uzumaki-san. Why did you come over to my house? Shino asked. Naruto placed the scroll in his jacket for later reading. I wanted to talk to you about the genin exam, Naruto explained. Since they cancelled the normal genin exam in favor for a more rigorous practical, I wanted to have a mock battle to see your skills, abilities, and weaknesses. Why? Since we will be taking the test together along with Shikamaru, 
it would be best that we have some idea of each other's abilities so that we may work together as a cohesive team tomorrow. Shino nodded. Then follow me to the practice field. Naruto followed Shino outside to a large open field. There were several posts and weights for taijutsus and targets for projectiles. In the center of the field was a large area for sparring. Shino and Naruto went inside the circle. Whenever you're ready Shino, Naruto said. Naruto settled into a kenjutsu stance while Shino waited. Shino made the first move. He threw several kanais and shurikens at Naruto. Naruto easily dodged them without moving his feet. Shino sent a huge mass of kikai bugs at Naruto. Naruto channeled chakra into his sword. Itoryu. Wind tunnel. Naruto swung his sword in a circular manner. The chakra from the sword caused a wind tunnel that sucked all of Shino's bugs away from Naruto. It channeled them away from Naruto back to Shino. Interesting technique, Shino commented. He charged Naruto with a kanai on hand. Naruto parried the attack and kicked Shino in the stomach. Shino exploded into a shower of bugs. The bugs then climbed all over Naruto and began sucking his chakra. Naruto quickly channeled chakra. He concentrated on MXING his wind affinity and water affinity chakra together. After several seconds, Naruto had a shiver run throughout his body due to his ice affinity chakra. Shino was in the trees as he watched his kikai bugs drain Naruto's chakra. He prepared to knock Naruto out when he noticed something strange. The bugs all over Naruto's body began falling off as if they were paralyzed. Naruto shook the rest of the kikai bugs off. Good trick Shino, Naruto complimented. You would have won if it wasn't for the fact I can make ice affinity chakra. Shino nodded. Naruto decided it was time for him to go on the offensive. Naruto made several seals. Sweden. Ice fog. Naruto faded away from Shino's sight as a thick and very cold mist appeared. Shino released his bugs into a protective wall around him. Shino noticed that his bugs were very sluggish from the cold. Naruto made several seals and concentrated. Ninpo. All seeing eye. Naruto sent chakra to his feet and was able to sense where Shino was. He made several clones and sent them after Shino. Shino dodged a hail of kanais and sent several shurikens back. He heard a small poof but thought nothing of it. A Naruto clone made several seals and aimed at Shino. Sweden. Rain grenade. Shino saw several orbs of water heading toward him. He made a bug wall to protect himself. The orbs of water exploded against the bugs, soaking the bugs with ice cold water. Many of Shino's bugs fell asleep from the cold. Shino turned to find the Naruto clone but felt a sword at his throat. You lose Shino. The fog vanished and found five Naruto's pointing their sword at various parts of his body. I forfeit, Shino said. Naruto grinned. The other four Naruto vanished. Naruto sheathed his blade and made several seals. Kaden. Heat wave, a pulse of hot air instantly revived most of Shino's bugs. The bugs flew back to Shino for warmth as most are still damp from Naruto's jutsus. Shino, after observing you, I find that you are indeed genin or low chunin level, Naruto said. Shino nodded. However, you are lacking in close range combat. Also you are very weak without your bugs. It would be best to use your bugs in combination with taijutsu or kenjutsu. Genjutsu would also be a good addition to your arsenal. Shino nodded, keeping notes of Naruto's suggestions. What about your abilitites? I know that you were holding back against me. Naruto nodded. I was. My abilities excel in kenjutsu, ninjutsu, and taijutsu. I am proficient in genjutsu but do not use it often. I have a three element affinities. Water, wind, and fire. I find it extremely hard to do earth and lightning jutsus. I also have a bloodline. What is your bloodline? Shino asked. Naruto grinned. My bloodline is caused by a mutation in my genes. Along with having an extremely high amount of chakra and chakra control, my chakra is deadly with anyone possessing a bloodline. What? Shino asked. If a Hyuga or Uchiha were exposed to my chakra, their bloodline abilities would be messed up. For example, the Sharingan would not be able to copy any of my jutsus and would only see things that happened 2 to 10 seconds in the past. The Byakugan would not be able to see through my body and find my Tenketsus while also losing their 359 degree vision, Naruto explained. Basically, any ninja with a bloodline would be nearly helpless if they only focused on their bloodlines. Shino was impressed. A bloodline that can cripple bloodlines while only granting the user increased chakra. 
Combined with a Kenjutsu and Taijutsu, Naruto is the nightmare of the Hyugas. You know, if the Hyugas learn of your abilities, you might have to deal with very powerful enemies in Konoha. Naruto grimaced. Spoil sport. Naruto waved goodbye to Shino and gave him a gift. Shino unwrapped it to find weights, a scroll, and length of chain. It was around 12 feet long and had a small weight at the end. He looked back at the package and found a small note by Naruto. Dear bug boy, it said. Shino had a tick mark above his eye. During my travels I received this from a ninja I beat. I found that it was a really effective weapon if used right. It is meant for capturing an opponent or for assassination. I modified it a bit so the weight at the end of a chain can store kikai bugs. This way, once you've captured a ninja with the chain, the kikai bugs can eat away their chakra. Also, you can channel chakra through the chains to make the chain as sharp as a blade. Shino whirled the chain around and wrapped it around a tree branch. He then channeled chakra throughout the chain and pulled. The area where the chain was wrapped around was cut into pieces. Shino wrapped it up and picked up the scroll and weights, eager to learn this new weapon. Naruto went to Shikamaru's house. It was around the same size as Shino's house and was hidden in the forest. He spotted several deer hidden by the foliage. Naruto knocked the door and waited. Shikamaru answered the door. Oh hi Naruto. What are you doing here? Naruto gave him the same answer as he gave Shino. After explaining, Shikamaru nodded lazily and muttered, troublesome blonde. They went to the training grounds where Naruto and Shikamaru sparred. Naruto easily beat Shikamaru. Shikamaru, do you ever train? Naruto asked. A little, Shikamaru muttered. Naruto sighed. He made several hand seals and poked Shikamaru lightly. Ninpo. Earth chaining seal. Shikamaru's limbs became twice as heavy than before. Troublesome blonde. What did you do to me? Shikamaru said angrily. Naruto smirked. I put a seal that will make you train. I won't take it off until I think you're ready, Naruto said. He quickly left before Shikamaru could catch him. See ya tomorrow Shika, Naruto called. Damn, troublesome blonde, Shikamaru muttered. The next day, all the academy students were waiting to take the test. Naruto sat by Shino who was reading the scroll Naruto gave him. Shikamaru was sleeping but Naruto noticed that he was a bit more built now. Most of the junins were waiting to test the student there but they had to wait for Aruka because he had the team list. After an hour, Aruka showed up. He was grinning like a maniac and was very happy. Good morning class. Aruka shouted. Morning sensei, the class responded slightly confused. Naruto sniffed the air and smirked. Aruka just got laid last night. Naruto looked at some of the junins. One of the junins giggled perversely and was elbowed in the stomach by Kurenai. All right, team one, please go with Genma, Aruka announced. A junin and a group of students left the classroom. Naruto began to sleep until his team was called out. Team seven inches. Naruto looked up. Please go with, a black ball came through the window. It popped open to reveal a banner that said, Anko Mitarashi, why sensei of team seven inches? All right, my team, Anko yelled. Meet me at training ground 26. Naruto, Shino, and Shikamaru left the classroom. Anko quickly ed Aruka and followed her students. Naruto and the others arrived at training ground first. They waited as Anko arrived. She grinned at her new students. Once she saw Naruto she started throwing kanais at him. Naruto easily deflected Tem with his own kanai. Good morning Anko-sensei. I believe you and Aruka had a memorable night together, Naruto said politely. Anko turned bright red. As a matter of fact, we did. I have to thank you though, you provoking Aruka like that. Shino and Shikamaru turned to Naruto interested. I hooked up Anko and Aruka. The two nodded. All right. Now I like to get the interesting things done first before anything else, Anko said. So I'll give you your test now. The three looked at Anko, waiting to hear what their test was. Your test is to capture me for a full 30 seconds. If you don't complete this in three hours, you all fail. Anko said. Shino and Shikamaru looked at Naruto. Naruto nodded. All three vanished into the foliage around the training ground. Naruto made several clones and had them attack Anko so she would lose some energy and chakra. He always went to look for Shikamaru and Shino. Naruto found Shino trying to dig himself out of the earth. Naruto quickly pulled Shino out of the hole and dragged him into the foliage. 
As Shino brushed dirt off his clothes, Naruto explained his plan. Shino listened carefully. When Naruto finished explaining, the two went to find Shikamaru. Naruto and Shino found Shikamaru sleeping. Annoyed, Naruto kicked him awake. Shikamaru grumbled but woke up. Hey Shika. Now listen, we'll need your help in capturing Anko Sensei, Naruto whispered. I want you to hide in those trees over there. Shino and I will drive her in your direction. When that happens, use your shadow imitation jutsu to trap her. We'll make sure she doesn't escape. Shikamaru nodded and hid himself in the shadows. Naruto and Shino went to find Anko. Anko was sitting on a boulder eating dango. As she took a bite, she sensed Shino and Naruto. She quickly finished her food and faced the two. Naruto threw several shurikens at Anko. She dodged them and threw a kanai at Shino. The kanai hit Shino but Shino exploded into a cloud of bugs. Anko dodged as a group of bugs charged at her. Naruto gathered chakra and made several hand seals. Food and wind cannon. Naruto fired several near invisible spheres at Anko. Anko didn't notice it until it was too late. She was hit hard and knocked 10 feet away. She growled and made several hand seals. Summoning Jutsu. A humongous snake charged Naruto. Naruto quickly went into a Kenjutsu stance. The snake tried to eat Naruto. It was 10 feet away from Naruto before Naruto moved. Itoryu. Gate opening. The snake was sliced cleanly in half. Anko's and Shino's eyes widen. To have the skill to cleanly cut a 50 foot long snake with one move takes an amazing amount of talent. Naruto charged Anko, using a full frontal assault with Shino supporting him with his bugs and chain. Despite the fact Anko used many ninjutsus, Anko was nearly hit by the chain several times already. She avoided a stab from Naruto and a sweet ninjutsus. Anko jumped back to dodge a swarm of insects and ducked Shino's chain. She watched as Shino's chain wrapped around a tree trunk and sliced the trunk into small pieces as Shino pulled. She jumped back to avoid a slash from Naruto's blade and landed in the shadow of a tree and became frozen. Shadow Imitation Technique Success Anko was forced to stand up straight while Shino's chain wrapped around her body several times. Anko's neck was forced back by Naruto's katana. She also felt Shino's kikai bugs crawling on her body and sapping her chakra away fast. She grinned. Naruto and Shino lured her into a trap that was set up by Shikamaru. Shikamaru would be able to hold her still for a minute while Shino's bugs sapped her chakra away. However, it wouldn't have worked if Naruto hadn't attacked her ferociously so that she wouldn't notice Shikamaru's absence. Anko grinned. This team had great teamwork and all of them good state gists. I surrender. Naruto smiled and sheathed his katana. Shino nodded and retracted his chain. He also ordered his kikai bugs back into his body. Anko shuddered involuntarily as she regained control of her body. Well brats. I've got to hand it to you. You passed with flying colors. I can see you three become great ninjas, Anko praised. The three smiled, even Shino. However, all of you have something to work on. Shino, you need to work on some genjutsus as well as some ninjutsus. Your taijutsus is good enough for now, Anko said. Shino nodded. Any peace advice is always helpful. Shikamaru, if you don't step up your training, I will come over to your house and make you. And you won't like my training schedule if you don't like giant snakes, poison, and the good chance of getting stabbed multiple times, Anko said sternly. Shikamaru winced. Troublesome broad. And you Naruto. I don't know what to do with you. Your ninjutsu is well above genin level and your kenjutsu is junin level. You should meet him and challenge him to a duel. I would probably say that you are the strongest genin out of Konoha, Anko said. Naruto smiled. He would have to ask Gekko for a spar. All right. Now that we got the test out of the way, let's go to a dango stall, Anko shouted. The three genins agreed as they were hungry and a bit tired. After they arrived in the stall and ordered food, Anko spoke to her team. Okay. Now that I know you three are ready to become genins, let's introduce ourselves. I'll start. My name is Anko Mitarashi. I like dango, sake, jutsus involving poison, and my cute boyfriend Aruka. I dislike a certain snake sanin, toad sanin, and little orange books. My specialties include ninjutsu, poisons, and assassination. My dream is to have a small family, become a proper junin, and to see a certain ninja without his mask, Anko said. Why don't you go first bug boy? Shino had tick above his eye. 
Why does everyone call him that? My name is Shino Abarame. I like collecting new bugs and training. I dislike bright light, loud noises, and pesticides. My specialty would probably be Taijutsu and my clan Jutsus. My dream is to show Konoha that the Abarames are as skilled as many of the famous clans in Konoha. You next, Sleepy. Shikamaru opened one eye at the Kunoichi and glared at her. My name is Shikamaru Nara. I like sleeping and looking at clouds. I dislike training and loud noises. My specialty would be clan jutsus and strategizing. My dream is to have an average family, grow old, and spend my retirement looking at clouds and play shogi. Your turn blondie. Naruto quickly swallowed the dango he was eating. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I like training, meeting friendly people, helping others, and learning new jutsus. I dislike a certain pair of loudmouth, spandex wearing, bowl but weirdos and their genjutsus. It's evil. I tell you. My specialty is kenjutsu and ninjutsu. My dream is to be so strong that the heavens themselves shall remember my name. Anko grinned. She had a diverse team. A lazy ass, an ambitious outcast, and an overachiever. This was going to be quite an interesting team. Interesting and destined for greatness. All right. You three are dismissed. I want to see you at training ground 26 at 7 o'clock in the morning. She left the stall in order to report to the Hokage, he'd be very interested in her report. Naruto and the others left soon after Anko. While Shino and Shikamaru went back to their houses, Naruto went around Konoha looking for a gecko Hayate. Anko arrived 30 minutes early for the Junin meeting, she waited until the other Junins appeared. Anko. Anko turned to see Kuranai sitting beside her. Hey Kuranai. What's up? Nothing really. I did hear an interesting rumor that you and Aruka are now a couple, Kuranai said. Anko smiled. That's right. We've only been going out yesterday but he's everything I wished for. Kuranai pouted. Why couldn't she get a man like Aruka? The two talked about their genins. Kuranai's team included Choji, Hanada, and Ino. Soon all the junins that tested the new batch of genins arrived. The Hokage waited until everyone settled down. Everyone Junin sensei. Please stand up and announce if the team failed or not. Also announce how well they passed. Team 1, failed. Team 2, failed. Team 3, failed. Team 4, failed. Team 5, failed. Team 6, failed. Team 7, passed with flying colors, Anko said proudly. Team 8, passed. Their teamwork is a bit rough but they'll get better over time, Kuranai said. Team 9, failed. Team 10, passed. They barely passed though. Their teamwork is horrible though, Kakashi said. The Hokage looked at Anko. Anko, you said your team passed with flying colors. Will you please tell us what happened? Anko grinned. The team I have includes Naruto Uzumaki, Shino Abarame, and Shikamaru Nara. The test I had them take was to capture me for 30 seconds. The Hokage was impressed that her team managed to pass her test. Anko was as slippery as a snake and her ability to evade is matched by some of the Anbu. Many Junins were also impressed. From what I can tell, Naruto expected this kind of test. He organized a strategy that efficiently captured me. I expect that this team could be the next Ino Shika Cho team. Naruto and Shino attacked me directly, Anko recounted. Naruto is able to use Fuuden and Sweden Jutsus very effectively. He also is extremely talented with Kenjutsu. During the battle, I summoned a 50-foot snake to attack Naruto. Instead of getting knocked around or swallowed, Naruto split the snake in half, from head to tail with one move. The Hokage was deeply impressed. To defeat a summon usually needed medium chunin skill depending on the summon. To be able to defeat such a large summon so easily meant that this Naruto was on par with a junin. While I had to deal with Naruto, I also had to fight Shino also. Shino is skilled in Taijutsu and his clan Jutsus. He also wielded a chain proficiently. His weapon acted like a long, flexible sword when he pumped chakra into it. Between the two of them, they drove me into the shadow of a tree. Shikamaru was waiting for me there and immediately caught me in his shadow imite on jutsus when I stepped into his shadow. Shikamaru held me there while Shino's chain wrapped around me. Shino also let his kikai bugs feed upon my chakra. Also I had Naruto's blade touching my throat. The three could have easily killed me right there. Anko said. Many of the Junins were deeply impressed. The Hokage was pleased to know that such a promising group of Genins existed. 
I must say. I haven't seen such a more promising group in my years as Hokage. Not even the Sanins came close. Anko grinned. She was going to have such a fun time being their sensei. The Hokage looked at Kakashi. Kakashi, I understand that your group included Kiba Inazaka, Sakura Haruno, and Sasuke Uchiha. I would like to understand why they failed so badly. Kakashi sighed. There are several reasons. On is that Kiba and Sasuke are both very headstrong individuals. Despite the fact Kiba accepted he needed the other's help, Sasuke denied him and Sakura followed him. Sakura also possesses the worst case scenario of a fangirl. She is absolutely brain dead if Sasuke is in the area and also insults Kiba repeatedly. I had to stop Kiba multiple times from killing Sakura. Sasuke is skilled for a genin but is very proud and obsessed with revenge. If I had a choice between the three, I would choose Kiba. He is the only one out of the three that has a realistic idea of how to be a ninja. It was only because of Kiba they passed the bell test. The Hokage sighed. Itachi Wao'd be very disappointed to hear how low his brother has become. Everyone dismissed. Anko, Kuranai, Kakashi. I want regular reports on the progress of your genin teams. Naruto finally found what he was looking for. He found Gekko Hayate in one of the training grounds practicing Kenjutsu. Excuse me. Are you Gekko Hayate? Naruto asked. Gekko turned to see the genin. He coughed a bit and nodded. Yes I am, Gekko replied. How may I help you? I want to spar with you. My Junin sensei said that you were the Kenjutsu specialist of Konoha. I want to spar with you to maintain my level of skill and improve, Naruto explained. Gekko nodded. He drew his sword and settled into a Kenjutsu stance. Naruto drew his katana and also went into a Kenjutsu stance. Gekko charged first. He slashed at Naruto only to have it parried by Naruto. Naruto kicked Gekko in the stomach and swung his sword at him. Gekko dodged the sword and tried to slash Naruto's feet. Naruto jumped over Gekko's blade and stabbed at Gekko's head. Gekko ducked and moved away from Naruto's blade. Naruto smirked. He made a thrusting motion with his sword, despite the fact Gekko was ten feet away from him. Itoryu. Bullet. Gekko dodged an air bullet that smashed through a tree, leaving a ten-inch round hole. Gekko held his sword in a guard position as Naruto rushed him. Itoryu. Demon Slash. Gekko's hands became numb at the sheer power of Naruto's strike. Gekko jumped back but Naruto wouldn't let Gekko escape. Itoryu. Wind Tunnel. Naruto spun his sword in a circular pattern, creating a whirlwind. Gekko slammed into a tree trunk. Before he realized it, Naruto's sword was at his throat. I win, Naruto said. Gekko grinned. He finally had a sparring partner he could go all out against. Well done. I haven't seen such skill anywhere in the fire country, Gekko said. Naruto rubbed the back of his head. Yeah well, I had good teachers. Gekko rubbed together his sore hands. If you ever want a rematch, just look for me. Don't worry next time, I'll be harder to beat. Naruto grinned. I wouldn't want it any other way. Now. Shikamaru used his jutsu to freeze the cat while Naruto shoved it inside a cage. Then Shino used his bugs to drain the cat of its energy. Naruto watched as the cat became drowsy and fell asleep. Naruto gave Shino the thumbs up sign to stop. Mission success. Anko sensei. Naruto said. Anko nodded. She looked at the stopwatch in her hand and smirked. Congratulations. You set a new record for capturing Tora the cat. One hour, four minutes, and seven seconds, beating the previous record by thirty minutes. Naruto smirked. Shino nodded. Shikamaru let out a snore. Naruto and Anko sweat dropped. How can anyone fall asleep so fast? Anko picked up the cage. Well let's get this back to the Hokage. We'll probably be able to do C rank missions now. Naruto kicked Shikamaru lightly to wake him up. After Shikamaru woke up, Team 7 headed to the Hokage Tower. Tora was rudely woken up when she found herself smothered by her owner. Thanks to Shino, Tora couldn't even lift a paw in defense. The Hokage nodded in approval at the efficient team. Now, Team 7, there are several D missions ready. Now there is. No. Naruto yelled. I'm tired of these damned demissions. The Hokage sighed. He looked at Aruka for help. However he was preoccupied with Anko at the moment. He looked at Team 7. Shikamaru was sleeping as usual. Shino was meditating. 
Naruto was polishing his katana. The Hokage breathed in deeply. He checked Team 7's record. 30 missions preformed with flawless teamwork, not to mention the newest record on capturing Tora the cat. Fine. I'll let you have a C rank mission, the Hokage relented. Naruto cheered. Everyone else was concerned with something else. Anko. Anko turned to the Hokage. Yes, Hokage? I will be assigning a C class mission to Wave. Your team will be escorting Tazuna. You are to protect him any bandits you might encounter, Hokage said. Tazuna, you may come in now. Naruto, Shino, and Anko turned to see an old man leaning on the doorframe. He was carrying a bottle of sake and was a little drunk. What these are my guards? These are just a bunch of brats, Tazuna said in a gravelly voice. Is that sake from Wave? Naruto asked excitedly. Tazuna grinned, yes it is. Some of the best I've tasted. I'll trade some of Kumo's sake for Waves, Naruto said. Naruto pulled out one of his storage scrolls and summoned a bottle of sake. Fifty years old. Very strong, Naruto said proudly. Tazuna began laughing. He tossed Naruto an unopened bottle of sake. Naruto grinned. He opened it and toasted to Tazuna. For delicious tasting sake in the future, Naruto toasted. Indeed. Tazuna said. I like this kid. The two drank a bit from the sake bottles. Smooth tasting and soothingly sweet, Naruto observed. Delicious. Tazuna shuddered as the sake went down his stomach. Wow. This stuff is strong and puts a jolt in your body. I love it, Tazuna said excitedly. All right, Team 7. Meet me in the Konoha gates in two hour, Anko said. Naruto and Shino nodded and Shino kicked Shikamaru awake. Hey Shika, we going on a C rank mission. Pack up. We have two hours. Meet us in the Konoha gates, Naruto explained. Hum. Troublesome blonde, Shikamaru muttered. He went back to sleep. Naruto and Shino left the Hokage Tower. In a few minutes, he arrived at his apartment where he heard grunting from the person next door. He dearly hoped that the guy was training. Naruto went into his apartment. Hey Q. Yeah Naruto. What's up? What do you think I should bring on this C rank mission? Naruto asked. I'm guessing your sword, ninja equipment, an extra set of clothes, sleeping gear, and food. Basically the scroll labeled C rank mission, Kayubi said. Naruto sweat dropped. He forgot about those pre-packed scrolls he made. Naruto packed one of the scrolls in his pocket. Now what? Naruto asked. Why don't you go train? It'll be good practice, before your mission. Naruto headed over to a deserted training ground. He added more weights and began doing his katas. He went through many of the forms for Itoryu. Naruto also went through Iajutsu practice. As he trained he sensed two people hiding in the bushes. All right, come out. I know you're hiding there. Sasuke and Sakura came out of the bushes. Sasuke had a look of envy and anger on his face. Sakura was just looking at Sasuke with dumb admiration. What do you want Uchiha? Naruto asked. Fight me, Sasuke demanded. Naruto sighed. He hated the fact that Sasuke thought everyone would obey him because he's the Uchiha prodigy. No, Sasuke became angrier. Fight me damn it. I don't feel like it, Naruto said. He turned his back toward Sasuke and resumed his training. Sasuke glared at the blonde. How dare that commoner treat him like a weakling, he was an Uchiha. Kaden. Great fireball. Sasuke fired a large fireball at Naruto. Naruto burst into flames. Sasuke smirked as he could see Naruto's body in the flames. Sakura was a bit disturbed by Sasuke violence but shrugged off seeing Sasuke's smile. Sasuke-kun is so cool. Sakura screamed. Sasuke grinned but it faltered a bit when he heard no screams. He looked at Naruto more closely. His mouth dropped. Naruto was calmly eating the fire off of him. Munch. Munch. You call this a fire jutsu. It's only warm. Not very strong at all. Weak even, Naruto said as he continued to eat. Sasuke could only watch as Naruto ate all the fire off of his body. Burp. Thanks for the food though, Sasuge, Naruto said. Naruto put his hand apart and made several one-handed seals in each hand. He then put both hands in front of his face in a horse seal. Oni Kaden. Air fireball. Naruto fired a baseball-sized white fireball at Sasuke. Meanwhile in the Hokage Tower, the Hokage was examining the forest. So beautiful and tranquil. 
Boom. The Hokage looked toward the training grounds to see a large gout of fire explode. What the hell? Back in the training grounds, Naruto examined his work. Sasuke was face down on the ground with several broken bones from the shockwave. Sasuke also had numerous third and second degree burns all over his body. Sakura was also injured. Her clothes were singed and she had many third degree burns on her arms. The training ground itself was a mess. Naruto aimed the fireball 10 feet away from Sasuke. The area where the fireball landed was a crater 10 feet wide and 5 feet deep. Around the area, the ground was scorched black. Hey Kit, I think you went overboard, Kayubi noticed. Yeah but who cares? Naruto said. Kayubi scowled. Naruto, you need to hide your abilities more carefully. If the council sees you as a threat, they will manipulate the villagers into persecuting you. The only reason they haven't yet is that they don't know who you are. Naruto sighed. Fine. Q Chan. Naruto walked up to Sasuke and kicked him over. He leaned over and whispered. Sasuge, never mess with me again or you'll have more than burns and bones to worry about. Naruto walked away. He stopped though for a second to speak with Sakura. Black Lace? Are you trying to be a whore? He ignored Sakura's scream and headed toward the gates. He waited by a nearby tree for 15 minutes. Shino was the first to arrive. He carried a small backpack with him. On his hip was the chain Naruto gave him. Hey Shino, all ready? Naruto asked. Hi Taicho, Shino said. Taicho? Why do you call me that Shino? Naruto asked. It's because you really are the leader among this team, troublesome blonde. Naruto turned to see Shikamaru walking towards them, with a lazy look on his face. Hey Shikamaru, I've seen you got used to the weights now, Naruto said. Shikamaru nodded. They feel like my normal limbs now, Shikamaru said. Naruto smirked. What are you doing Naruto? Ninpo. Earth chaining seal. Shikamaru tried to dodge Naruto's finger but was too slow. Naruto poked him hard on the chest. Shikamaru felt his body become heavier. Damn it Naruto, Shikamaru said. Why do you keep doing that? Because you won't get your lazy ass to train, Naruto said. I don't do it to Shino because he's wearing weights right now. Shino pulled up his sleeves to show a bracer attached to his arm. He also lifted his pants a bit to show weights around his ankle. Shino, how much do you have? Naruto asked. 200 pounds altogether Naruto Taicho, Shino answered. Naruto grinned. That much already? Shino that's great, Naruto said. They waited for five more minutes. Anko arrived with Tizuna. Tizuna was a little bit drunk. He saw Naruto and raised his sake bottle to him. Hey kiddo. This stuff is great. When we get back at my house, why don't we share a bottle, Tizuna said, his words a bit slurred. Naruto laughed. Sure. I'm always interested in different sakes. Ha 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 ha. Tizuna laughed. Anko looked at Naruto. Aren't you too young to drink? Old enough to kill. Old enough to drink, Naruto retorted. Anyway, sake in small amounts can speeds up your chakra, making it easier to control and manipulate. It also tastes good. That's right. Tizuna shouted. Anko shrugged. Fine, but I won't be carrying your drunk ass if you get drunk. All right Team 7, Shino, I want you in front. Those Kikai bugs will be able to sense any danger that may come toward us. Shikamaru, you next. You can back Shino up with those shadows. Naruto in the middle. This way you can help me or Shino and Shikamaru if we run into trouble. Tizuna, stay behind Naruto. I'll be the rear guard as I'm the most experienced, Anko ordered. The group got into formation and began traveling towards Wave. They traveled in silence for about 15 minutes. Naruto got a bit antsy and decided to speak up. Tizuna, what's Wave like? Naruto asked. Tizuna paused a bit. It's a beautiful country surrounded by crystal waves. The people there are friendly. To me it's paradise, Tizuna said. Naruto and Anko noticed that his voice had several emotions in it. The most prominent were sadness and longing. They passed a puddle. Shino gave Naruto a look. Naruto made a calming motion with his hand. Shino nodded and continued ahead. As the group passed the puddle, two ninjas appeared. They charged the group. Tizuna moved. Tizuna turned to see Anko wrapped around a bladed chain, the ends held by two ninjas. The ninjas pulled and the group watched Anko sliced into pieces. The ninjas then charged Tizuna. 
Naruto charged the two ninjas. He sliced the chain easily and delivered two powerful kicks. The two ninjas landed in Shikamaru's shadow where they were easily restrained and drained of their chakra by Shino. Anko came walking out of the bushes. Good job, Shikamaru, tie them to a tree. Shino, take anything useful from their clothes. Naruto come with me. Tizuna and I are going to have a little talk, Anko said. The two went to Tizuna who was shivering from his close encounter with death. Tizuna. Tizuna jumped a little bit. We want to know why two ninjas are trying to kill you, Anko said. She drew a kanai from her pack. Don't make me use this. I promise it won't be pleasant if I do. Gato. Tizuna spat out. Naruto was surprised. You mean the Gato, one of the richest people in the world? Tizuna nodded. That damned man wants me dead because of what I'm doing. He sees me as a threat because I'm building a bridge. A bridge? That's why. Anko asked perplexed. You have to understand Wave's geography before you understand why Gato fears the bridge. Wave is surrounded by ocean. The only way to end from the island is by boat, Tizuna explained. Ever since Gato's shipping drove everyone else from business, Gato literally controlled Wave. Everyone lives in poverty. Gato's thugs do what they please. The bridge I'm building is large enough to drive Gato out of Wave. If the bridge is completed, then Wave's economy will flourish again. I couldn't afford a B rank mission, so that's why I lied and asked for a C rank. By now, Shino and Shikamaru were back. They looked at Anko for orders. Anko nodded. Everything made sense. She put the Kanai back into her pack. Well, let's go back to Konoha. I'm sure. No. Anko turned to see Naruto with his arms crossed. Let's complete the mission. I'm not going to just give up on this mission just because it was mislabeled. Anyway, we're ready. We caught you and could have killed you in our genin exam. You're a junin also. I'm sure we're more than ready to go on this mission, Naruto explained. Anko turned to Shino and Shikamaru. Do you agree? Shino nodded. Shikamaru sighed. It's too troublesome to go back now that we've gone this far. Troublesome blonde. Naruto glared at Shikamaru. Oi quit calling me that or else I'll up those seals. Shikamaru immediately shut up. He didn't want to carry any more weight now. Anko sighed. They were right. Anyway, she needed to go on a mission like this to maintain her skill. Okay. Get back into formation, Anko ordered. Naruto grinned and went back in line. Anko turned to Tizuna. Once Wave get back on their feet, you will pay for an A-rank mission, understand? Crystal clear ma'am, Tizuna replied. They walked for several miles. Everyone had their guard up. Every once in a while Naruto used Ninpo. All-seeing eye. Naruto noticed the wind changed direction and smelled the air. He smelled blood, iron, and sea salt. Naruto threw a kanai into the bushes. The rest watched as they saw Naruto pick up a snow white rabbit, scared to death. A white rabbit. That means it's been raised indoors. Someone used it for a karurimi, Anko thought. She heard a deep humming noise coming toward them. Duck. Anko pulled Tizuna down just as a huge Zanbatu missed them. It missed the three genins and stabbed a tree. A large ninja appeared on the sword. Anko looked at the ninja recognizing him. Zabuza Momochi, demon of the mist, Anko said. Zabuza laughed. I'm honored you know me, Anko Mitarashi, the leaf's snake mistress. Everyone turned to see Naruto waving at Zabuza. To their surprise, Zabuza waved back, with a look of delight on his face. Hey brat. What's up? Zabuza said. Where's you sensei? Around doing missions as a hired nin, Naruto answered. Wait, if you're here, then that means. Naruto-kun. Naruto turned to see a girl jump at him. She caught him in an ultra glomp. Naruto-kun. I knew I'd see you again, the girl shouted happily. Look at you, you've grown taller than me. And you also have red highlights in your hair. You look so good. Anko, Shino, Shikamaru, and Tazuna were so confused. What the heck is going on? Naruto, who is the girl and how do you know them? Anko asked. Naruto turned to face her. He waddled a bit because the girl was hugging him very tightly. Her name is Haku, Anko Sensei. Haku noticed the others and bowed politely. Nice to meet you, my name is Haku. Naruto rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment. Haku noticed and glommed him again. Kawaii, Zabuza smirked. So what are you doing here? 
Oh I'm on a mission to escort Tazuna here to wave, Naruto answered. Zabuza sighed. He was worried about that. Well brat, my mission is to kill the old man. You know what this means. Yep, Naruto said. Haku's eyes widened. Anko felt something was going to happen. She drew out her kanai. Shikamaru copied her while Shino prepared his chain. The tension was so thick you could cut it with a knife. Nothing can be heard except the wind rustling through the trees. Everyone tensed as they waited to see what will happen. Jan Ken Pon. Naruto and Zabuza shouted. Everyone except Haku fell down. Naruto had scissors while Zabuza had paper. Ha! I win. Zabuza smirked. Oh well I guess I'll let you pass. Heck I'll help. Wait a second, Anko shouted. You're going to help us? Zabuza nodded. That's the way the seven swordsmen solved their problems. The winner gets his way and the loser helps him. Anko sweat dropped. One of the most powerful groups settled argument with Jan Ken Pan? Zabuza retrieved his sword. Well let's get going. He began walking. Haku followed him while dragging Naruto along. Come on Anko sensei. Naruto shouted. The others chased after them. They reached the wave with no problem. During the trip, Zabuza and Anko discussed about Gato. Since, you worked for Gato, you must know if he hired any more ninjas, Anko asked. Zabuza nodded. Gato hires most mist nins because of the civil war within mist. Most of the ninjas Gato hired are barely above genin. However, there are three that may give us problems. Who are they? Anko asked. Let's see. There's Yazu, the stone bear. Aoi Rokususho is there. He sucks as a swordsman. Also there's a Kagaya, named Katsu. He's better known as the spear of the mist. Great. Three junins. And an S rank 1-2. Anko looked at her team. She was sure that they would be ready but a little training wouldn't hurt. She also looked at Haku. Zabuza, if you gave Haku a rank, what rank would she be? Anko asked. Um. Hi Chunin. Maybe a low Junin rank, Zabuza guessed. Meanwhile, Haku and Naruto were happily talking. Shikamaru and Shino watched while Tizuna drank his sake. Hey Shino, Shikamaru whispered. Shino turned toward Shikamaru. You think Naruto had some kind of romantic relation with Haku? Shikamaru asked. Shino observed he couple. It was obvious that they are very comfortable with each other and judging by their body language, they did not hide anything from one another. They also had a hint of a blush on their faces. It is possible Shikamaru, Shino admitted. Shikamaru grinned. He matched his movements with Naruto and made a hand seal. Ninpo, shadow imitation. Shikamaru's shadow connected with Naruto's. Shikamaru quickly made Naruto's hand slap her ass. Haku was in the middle of a sentence when Naruto slapped her ass. She looked at Naruto. Naruto was bright red and stammering. Naruto kun, I didn't know you were like that, Haku said coyly. She pinched his ass hard. Itai. Naruto screamed. Shikamaru was struggling not to laugh. Shino was smiling beneath his collar. Tazuna didn't care and continued to drink. Shikamaru snickered and repeated his jutsu, only making Naruto grow Haku. Naruto, if I didn't know better, I would say you want me, Haku whispered. In honesty, Haku didn't mind. During Naruto's training, Haku fell in love with him and her love only intensified when he left. Naruto was extremely embarrassed. God damn it Shikamaru. As soon as we get back to Konoha, you are dead, Naruto thought. You might want to thank him Naruto. I notice a huge influx of naughty thoughts in your brain. Ooh that's kinky, Kayubi said. Shut up. Naruto thought. Naruto was jolted back to reality by Haku jumping on his back. Naruto-kun, my feet hurt. Will you carry me until we get to Tazuna's house? Haku asked. Naruto was about to say no but made the mistake by looking into her eyes. She had the puppy eyes at full blast. Okay Haku. You can stay there until we reach Tazuna's house, Naruto said. Haku cheered and ed him on the cheek. Damn puppy eyes, Naruto thought. Naruto blushed though when Haku nuzzled his cheek. Naruto looked at Haku. She really was beautiful. Her skin was flawless and her hair was long and soft. It didn't hurt that she had a well-developed body that was much better than the girls her age in Konoha. Haku-chan, Naruto said softly. The rest of the trip was finished in silence. Once they arrived at Tazuna's house, 
most just went straight to bed. Anko and Haku had their own room while everyone else slept on another room. Naruto tucked Haku in a futon. She really was beautiful. Naruto blushed and felt his heart race. Am I really falling in love with her? Naruto thought. Naruto shook his head and ed Haku on the cheek. Good night Hakuheim, he whispered and left the room. Haku smiled, despite the fact that she was sleeping. A section of the room shimmered. It stopped and revealed Anko. She was grinning. The damned Naruto got her and Aruka together. Now it was her turn to play matchmaker and she would do it while causing Naruto plenty of embarrassment. Naruto went back to his room. Shikamaru was sleeping, no surprise there. Shino was reading the scroll Naruto gave him. Tazuna and Zabuza were sitting by a small table drinking sake. Tazuna turned and saw Naruto. Naruto. Come over here and have some sake. Tazuna shouted. Naruto grinned and sat with them. Tazuna poured him a shot of sake. Naruto sipped some. Iwa sake? Naruto asked. Tazuna nodded. Got this one five years ago. Not as strong tasting but has more of a filling taste. Naruto drank the rest of his shot. After several drinks, Naruto went to bed tired and a little drunk. Good m o o o o o o o r n i n g n a a a a r t u u u u u u t o o o o o o. Naruto opened his eyes just in time to see the bottom of Zabuza's sandals stomp on his face. It's training time, Zabuza shouted. God damn it! Why do you insist on doing that every morning? Naruto bellowed. Shish, calm down. All I did was just stomp on your head, Zabuza said. Just stomp on my head? Are you a bleep, ing retard? Naruto bellowed. Zabuza smirked. Anyway, get your ass out of bed. I've been itching fro a good sword fight since you left. Naruto grinned. He picked up his katana and ran out the door. Zabuza ran after him, a big smile on his face. Naruto and Zabuza went outside. Both of them immediately went into a kenjutsu stance. Let's go all out brat. I want to see what you can do, Zabuza said. My pleasure, Naruto said. Naruto dashed at Zabuza. He swung his blade low at Zabuza's thigh. Zabuza shielded his leg with the zanbatu and used its weight to push Naruto off. Naruto jumped back and brought his blade up to block Zabuza's swing. Naruto felt the ground give in as he pushed off Zabuza's blade. He quickly stabbed Zabuza. Zabuza dodged it and swung his sword at Naruto. Naruto managed to duck the blade and stab at Zabuza's shoulder. Zabuza jumped back, panting a bit. Well brat, you certainly got in faster, Zabuza chuckled. He channeled his chakra through his zanbatu. Metsujutsu. Chakra wave. Zabuza swung his sword at Naruto. A huge blue chakra blade shot out at Naruto. Naruto dodged it and thrust his sword at Zabuza. Itoryu. Bullet. Zabuza held his blade sideways. The air bullet smashed into the blade with a loud clang. Metsujutsu. Wave chaos. Zabuza swung his sword rapidly in Naruto's direction. Naruto had to deflect and dodge many of the chakra blades. He was so busy deflecting the blades, he didn't notice Zabuza behind him. Kenjutsu. Gay dragon. Zabuza roared and slammed the handle of his zanbatu up Naruto's ass. Shi T. Naruto screamed as he flew away from Zabuza. Naruto landed hard on the ground. He glared at Zabuza, who was laughing at Naruto. Naruto jumped back up. He released some of his weight seals and charged at Zabuza. Itoryu. Demon slash. Zabuza was able to block at the last moment. However, Naruto's attack was so strong that Zabuza flew of his feet. Itoryu. Wind tunnel. Naruto fired a tornado at Zabuza. Zabuza began spinning fast and slamming head first into a tree trunk. Naruto smirked as Zabuza got up. He was developing a large bruise on his forehead. You brat. Metsujutsu. Chakra dragon. Zabuza channeled a huge amount of chakra into the blade and swung it at Naruto. A humongous glowing dragon sped towards Naruto. Naruto calmly put his sword back into the sheath and settled into a kenjutsu stance. Zabuza's eyes widened. He mastered that technique. Iajutsu. Demon wheel. Naruto swung his sword and sheathed in one movement. A giant red buzzsaw made of chakra easily sliced through Zabuza's dragon and absorbed it. The buzzsaw sped toward Zabuza twice as fast as the dragon. Zabuza channeled chakra into his zanbatu, 
hoping to lessen the impact of the giant buzzsaw. It slammed into Zabuza causing him to crash through several trees before stopping. Zabuza looked up to see Naruto's blade at his throat. Yield. Zabuza sighed. He dropped his Zanbatu down as a sign of surrender. Naruto grinned. Told you I'd beat you one day, Naruto said. He started laughing when he heard Zabuza mutter something about troublesome blondes. Come on. Let's get back to Tazuna's house, Naruto said. He helped Zabuza up and dragged him back to Tazuna's house. Haku was preparing breakfast with Tsunami. She was thinking about her feelings for Naruto. Was it more like adoration of was it truly love? Haku sighed. These feelings are so confusing. She looked outside to see Naruto and Zabuza sparring. She watched as Naruto eventually defeated Zabuza. She smiled, happy to see that Naruto finally defeated Zabuza in a Kenjutsu's duel. Naruto did promise to defeat Zabuza next time they met. She watched as Naruto dragged Zabuza to the kitchen table. Good morning, Naruto kun. Haku said cheerfully. Naruto smiled at her. Good morning Haku Haim, Naruto said. Haku blushed. Maybe Naruto was falling in love with her. The thought made Haku blush dark red. Naruto noticed Haku blushing. He put a hand on her forehead. You okay Haku? You don't seem like you're having a fever. He sweat dropped when Haku fainted. Tsunami giggled when she saw the confused look on Naruto's face. Excuse me Naruto. Would you please lay Haku in one of the sofas? Tsunami asked. Naruto was surprised there was another person there but did as she asked. After an hour, everyone except Shikamaru was awake. Anko ordered Naruto to wake up Shikamaru. After a couple seconds, they heard a thud, a curse, and Naruto shouting. Wake up ya lazy bastard. Shikamaru came running downstairs while Naruto chased him holding a finger out. Anko looked as Naruto chased Shikamaru around and around the table. She had enough. When Shikamaru passed by her, she grabbed his ponytail and slammed him on the ground. She then punched Naruto in the stomach. Will you shut up? It's 8 in the morning. Gomen Anko Sensei, Naruto and Shikamaru said simultaneously. Anko smirked and began eating her breakfast. After everyone finished eating, she took her team outside. What the heck happened? Anko asked aloud. The backyard was cut up with slash marks, a crater, and a huge ditch. Many of the trees were cut down. That was Zabuza and I, Sensei, Naruto admitted. We had a Kenjutsu spar. Anko shook her head. She should have expected it. A few days ago, Gekko told her that Naruto's Kenjutsu surpassed his by far. Gekko suspected Naruto was trained by one of the seven swordsmen. Anyway, I'm going to teach you a couple of jutsus. First, I want you to channel your chakra into these cards, Anko said. She gave Naruto, Shino, and Shikamaru a card. Naruto channeled some chakra. The card split in half. Then one half began burning while the other half turned wet. Shino channeled chakra into his card. His card exploded into flames. Shikamaru's card split like Naruto's did. All right. Naruto it appears you have three chakra affinities. Wind is your primary element while water and fire are your secondary type. Naruto nodded, he already knew about this already. Shino, you have an unusually high affinities to fire. More than most Uchihas. This most likely means you'll be able to able to perform fire ninjutsus which ease but be vulnerable to water jutsus. Shino said nothing. It does explain the reason why I'm able to perform bug bomb jutsu so easily. Shikamaru, you have a wind element like Naruto. You'll be able to perform wind ninjutsu with not much difficulty but earth jutsu are out of the question. Shikamaru nodded. Anko grinned. Today, I'll be teaching a defense and offense jutsu for water, wind, and fire. Anko grinned. Today, I'll be teaching a defense and offense jutsu for water, wind, and fire. The first one I'm going to show is Kaden, Phoenix Immortal Flame. It is a spread fire fireball technique. It's useful as a distraction or move to hinder enemies. Also it's possible to hide shurikens within the fireballs. Anko showed them the seals and fired at a nearby stump. Five fireballs whistled toward the stump, scorching it badly. The defensive fire technique is Katen, burning ash smog. It's like mist jutsu only that it spews stagnant ash hot enough to create burns. Also if you click your tongue, the ash ignites. Anko showed them the seals again. This time a cloud of ash wafted toward the stump. 
Anko clicked her tongue and the ash cloud exploded leaving half the stump. Anko dismissed Shino to practice the two jutsus she showed him, she turned to Shikamaru. Now the two jutsus I'm going to show you are Fuden, Great Breakthrough and Fuden, Spiral Shield, Anko said. Shikamaru observed as Anko slowly did the hand seals. She blew a wind shock wave that knocked Shikamaru down. She then made another series of hand seals in blue. A near invisible tornado spun in front of her, acting like a shield. Shikamaru went away to practice the techniques. Anko turned to Naruto, who was patiently waiting for Anko to show him two water jutsus. All right, Naruto, the offensive jutsu is named Sweden, Water Shark Missile. The other one is Sweden, Water Wall. Now Water Shark Missile fires a jet of water in the shape of a shark. The other jutsu summons a water wall that surrounds you for several seconds, Anko explained. Now since these jutsus can only be used near water, I'll just show you the seals themselves, Anko said. Naruto memorized the seals quickly and went off to find a pond. He searched around the forest for several minutes until he smelled water. Naruto headed toward the source of water. Naruto went to the clearing. The clearing was a wide meadow. In the center was a large pond. The pond was filled connected to a waterfall. Naruto examined the area. It was perfect. Naruto spotted something on the banks. It was, clothes. Very familiar clothes too. Oh crap. Naruto-kun. Naruto turned to see Haku bathing. Naruto blushed extremely red. He felt his head heat up drastically. 3.2.1. Lift off, Kayubi said. Naruto suffered a nosebleed that made him fall of the tree branch he was on. He landed hard on his head. Naruto kun. Naruto cracked open his eyes to find himself staring at Haku's eyes. They were full of concern. Are you alright? Haku asked. Yeah, I'm fine, Naruto grunted. He lifted his head and had a great angle of Haku's bare chest. Naruto blacked out from the blood rushing to his head. Naruto kun. After an hour, Naruto woke up. He opened his eyes to see Haku, fully clothed. Ah Naruto-kun you're awake. Sorry about that, Naruto said. It's alright. It was an accident. Anyway, what are you doing out here? Haku asked. Oh Anko-sensei, showed me hand seals for two water jutsus, Naruto explained. Really? What two jutsus? Haku asked. Um. Water wall and water shark missile. Oh. Those is jutsus. I know those jutsus, Haku said. Really? Can you teach me? Naruto asked. Haku nodded. Sure, but I expect you to teach me two jutsus in return. Naruto nodded. That sounds fair. For the next three hours, Naruto and Haku spent several hours learning the new jutsus. Naruto enjoyed spending time with Haku. She was beautiful, caring, strong, and had a great body. Haku also shared the same thoughts. Naruto was fun, charming, skilled, and amazing. They stopped when Haku fell down, suffering from chakra exhaustion. Are you alright Haku-chan? Naruto asked, worried. Haku gave Naruto a weak grin. I'm fine. I think I used a little too much chakra though. Naruto smiled. Well we should be getting back to Tazuna's place now. Haku nodded and tried to stand up but couldn't. She tried multiple times but her body was exhausted. Naruto-kun, could you carry me to Tazuna's house? Haku asked, embarrassed. She felt ashamed looking so weak in front of Naruto. Naruto smiled. He gently picked her up, bridal style and began heading toward Tazuna's house. Haku was extremely happy. She had a great time teaching Naruto jutsus. She knows she's beautiful enough for Naruto, and now she's being carried back like a princess. She nearly squealed in delight. Naruto was having an argument inside his head. I can't fall in love with her. She's only a friend. I'm sure that she sees me as a friend also, Naruto thought. You are so stupid, Kit. You know that? Kayubi said. Why do you say I'm an idiot? Any person with an eye can see that you love her deeply, Kayubi answered. Yeah right, Naruto said sarcastically. It's true. She has cared for you constantly and didn't care if you groped her, Kayubi noted. That was Shikamaru. Naruto screamed. Point as she loves you. Give her a chance sometime, Kayubi said. Naruto sighed. You're right. Maybe I should give her a chance. Can you feel the love tonight? It is where we are. It's enough for this wide eyed wanderer that we got this far. 
And can you feel the love tonight how it's laid to rest? It's enough to make kings and vagabonds believe the very best. Stop singing. Sheesh, just trying to set the mood here. No need to get all defensive about it, Kayubi said. Sorry, Naruto said. No problem, Kayubi said. You're right but what should I do? Naruto asked. I have no idea. Maybe after the mission you guys can do something? Kayubi asked. Hum. You think the Hokage might allow them join Konoha? What? Kayubi asked. I mean think about it. Zabuza would be a great asset to the Konoha force. Also Haku isn't really an enlisted ninja, Naruto answered. Maybe but you're going to need Anko's recommendation. The Hokage will probably need some act of good faith, Kayubi. It would also be good if you discussed it with Anko and Zabuza, Kayubi commented. Sigh. Troublesome. Naruto. Naruto snapped out of his thinking to see Anko waving at him. He jumped and landed noiselessly on the ground. We've been waiting for you. Tsunami just finished making a delicious dinner. We saved some for you, Anko said. Zabuza came out the house to greet Naruto. Hey brat have you seen? He stopped when he saw Haku on Naruto's back. He also saw the trail of dry blood on Naruto's face. Naruto and Anko became worried as Zabuza began emitting killer intent. You. Zabuza thundered as he pointed at Naruto. What? Naruto asked, thoroughly confused. What did you do to Haku? Zabuza took his Zanbato out, channeling so much chakra in it that the blade began glowing. Oh shit, Naruto thought. He held out his hands in front of Zabuza, trying to calm him down. Look Zabuza, nothing happened I accidentally saw her bathing and. You're dead. Author's note. Now not to confuse any pedophile fans who think Zabuza is in love with Haku. Zabuza is just being very protective of Haku who he sees as a daughter. A huge chakra blade shot out at Naruto. Naruto dodged it but had to use a kawarimi to avoid a slash from Zabuza. Wait. All we did was train. I swear to Kami, Naruto yelled as he dodged a giant chakra dragon. Zabuza raised his sword again to launch another chakra blade at Naruto. He stopped when he felt two senbon needles puncture his pants, just a hair's breadth from his balls. He quickly put a hand on his crotch just to make sure nothing was missing. Show and knee. Good they're still there, Zabuza whispered relieved. Now Zabuza, please stop, Haku said from behind Naruto. She had woken up when Zabuza began attacking Naruto. Naruto kun and I were just training and I overexerted myself a bit. Naruto kun offered to carry me back so I could rest on the way back, Haku explained. Naruto nodded in agreement. Zabuza glared but placed his Zanbato back on his back. He trudged back to the house muttering about blonde brats. Anko smirked as she nudged Naruto. So, just accidentally saw her bathing? Yes, Naruto said. Exasperated, he lowered Haku off his back. He didn't notice that he was unconsciously holding Haku's hand. Right accidentally, I'll believe that when Kakashi takes off his masks, Anko said sarcastically. In Konoha, Guy was sparring with Kakashi. He ducked Kakashi's punch and kicked him in the chin. This blow inadvertently knocked Kakashi's mask off his face. G.I. stared in shock at his rival's uncovered face. Snicker. Giggle. Ha 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 Guy laughed. Kakashi glared at Guy as Guy fell on the ground laughing. Ha 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 ha. Kakashi, you have a mustache and buck teeth. Guy shouted and began laughing again. He continued to laugh long after Kakashi left leaving many to believe the ninja had finally cracked. Back in wave, Naruto greeted Shino and Shikamaru who were lounging about on the kitchen. In the kitchen. Tazuna was drinking sake while Tsunami was cleaning the table. Anko was eating a couple of dangos she saved in Konoha and watching Zabuza and Haku in an intense whispering argument. Hey guys how'd it go? Naruto asked. Shikamaru grunted. Went fine. My great breakthrough and spiral shield need more chakra than I can spare so I need to build up my chakra reserve. How about you Shino? Naruto asked. Can perform both jutsus but I'm too slow, Shino said. Naruto grinned. He had mastered both sweet and jutsus Anko showed him while also mastering burning ash smog. It helped that he had a teacher and monstrous reserves. Well I'm sure you can do it soon, Naruto said optimistically. The door opened and a child walked in. The child had a look of extreme depression on his face. Oh Inari, Tsunami greeted the child. 
Come and meet your grandpa's bodyguards. They're here to protect him from Gato until grandpa's done constructing the bridge. The child gave the group a baleful glare. You should leave now. It doesn't matter if you're ninjas, Gato will kill you all. Anko and Zabuza glared at the child. Haku looked at the child with sympathy in her kind eyes. Shino merely observed him and judged he wasn't worth responding to. Shikamari didn't care. Naruto was seething. What gives you the right to say we'll die? Inari looked at Naruto. Everyone dies if they go against Gato, you're no different. Inari closed his eyes. Anyway, you wouldn't know how hard our lives are. Naruto snapped. Before anyone could react, Naruto picked the kid up and threw him through the wall. Everyone was too shocked to react as Naruto went outside to shout at the kid. I don't have a bad life. I was nearly killed several times before I was seven and you tell me I don't know what a bad life is, Naruto shouted. Living in rags while S-C-A-V-E-G-I-N-G food out the trash. No parent to comfort me when I was stabbed, kicked, or beaten. No shelter except the confines of a small moldy cardboard box. Naruto ripped open his shirt. Look at this. Inari gazed at Naruto's chest disgusted. Scars and burns crisscrossed his chest and torso. A large burn making the word demon was the most visible wound. Naruto calmed down at the sight of Inari's horrified face. He buttoned his jacket and said softly. Look Inari. You have a mom who loves you and a grandfather who's brave enough to defy Gato. They love you with all their hearts. Also, other loved ones watch over you always, Naruto said gently. Inari started crying, ashamed at himself. Naruto was right. Kaiza would be ashamed of him. Naruto smiled when he saw Inari cry. Let it all out Inari. It's all right, Naruto said gently. He hugged Inari letting him know that he was not alone. Inari sobbed on Naruto's shoulder. Naruto Nisan, he sobbed. Naruto smiled and let the boy cry into sleep in his arms. Meanwhile at Gato's thug headquarters, a small figure spoke to three people in front of him. Now it's been three days since Zabuza left. I assume that he's been killed by ninjas protecting Tizuna. This time I want Tizuna to be dead for sure, the short figure said. Go to the bridge and kill Tizuna. I want his head for a gift for the people of Wave. Hi Gato Sama, the three figures said. They stood up and left the room. One of the men was huge. He wore standard Iwa Junin clothes and also wore a bear pelt over it. On his back was a gigantic axe. The man spoke to his comrade in a rough voice. Oi, ah oi. Do you know where the bridge is? What is a bridge anyway? The big man asked. Aoi rolled his eyes at the huge man's ignorance. Aoi wore clothes of an aim nin. He carried several umbrellas on his back and on his hip was one of Konoha's revered treasures, the Nidime's sword. Yazu, shut your dumb fat ass up, Aoi snapped. Gay freak, Yazu snapped. Bear humper. Umbrella sodomizer. Take that back, Aoi roared. Make me. Yazu growled and withdrew his axe from his back. Aoi pulled one of the umbrellas on his back and drew the Nidime's sword. Enough. The two Junins felt a massive spike in chakra behind them. A palish white man was casually flipping a dagger made of bone. He glared at the two Junins. Enough already. I'm tired of your bickering. If you do it again before Tazuna's killed, I will shove a spear up both your assholes, the pale man said. The two ninjas nodded. Clear, Kagaya-sama. Good, the Kagaya said. He stabbed himself with the bone and watched it melt into his bone. The two Junins shivered at the freaky sight. The Kagaya jumped off into the trees with the two Junins close behind him, all three prepared to go any lengths to complete the motion. Anko woke up early, managing to witness Zabuza sneaking up on Naruto for a painful morning wake-up call. She stifled a giggle. She should do that to Aruka or Shikamaru. Shikamaru more likely because that lazy ass wouldn't train unless someone specifically told him to train. She smirked when she heard Zabuza's war cry, a thud, and Naruto yelling at Zabuza at the top of his voice. She moved out of the way as Zabuza ran past her snickering with malicious glee while Naruto chased Zabuza in an undershirt and boxers, waving his katana in a threatening manner. After they passed, Anko heard a door opening. She turned and saw Shino calmly walking out the boy's room. Shino noticed Anko and greeted her. Good morning Anko-sensei, I'm going out to train, Shino said. Anko nodded while Shino jumped out the window into the forest. 
Anko went down to the kitchen to see Tazuna piss drunk at the table. She prodded him awake with a poke from her kanai. Itai. Tazuna said, bolting upright, he groaned and held his head. Oh. Hangover. He blundered into the kitchen and began searching in the various cabinets. After several minutes, he came back to the table carrying a red bottle and a shot glass. Anko watched in interest as Tazuna filled the shot glass with some bright green mixture from the red bottle. He stood up and dumped the contents of the shot glass down his throat. He stiffened for a moment and collapsed. Anko quickly hurried by his side. Tsunami san, she yelled. Tsunami came running to the kitchen. She noticed her father on the ground with Anko frantically checking for a pulse. She then noticed the red bottle on the table. Anko, it's fine. He's just knocked out for a bit, Tsunami said. Anko gave her a skeptical look. What he drank was a very strong herbal mixture that rapidly flushes the alcohol out making them fully functionable in an hour. However, the mixture knocks out a person for an hour then wakes them up by involuntary urination of the alcohol. Anko gave a disgusted look at the involuntary urination part. She stopped checking on a pulse left him on the ground. She walked over to examine the mixture. She poured a drop on her finger and sniffed it. Woo! That's some strong stuff! Anko exclaimed. Tsunami nodded. Anyway, would you help me with breakfast Anko-san? Anko nodded. For an hour, she helped Tsunami with the breakfast, mentally remembering some of the dishes to cook for Aruka when she got back to Konoha. While they were preparing breakfast, Naruto and Zabuza came into the kitchen arguing. That was my win brat. Zabuza gloated. No it wasn't, you used a jutsu. Therefore I won, Naruto protested. Zabuza gave a Naruto a shit-eating grin, so? I'm a ninja. Naruto growled. Let's decide who won now, Jan Ken Pan. Zabuza had scissors while Naruto had paper. Bleep. I-N-G. Bleep. Go, bleep, yourself. Naruto bellowed. Zabuza was laughing and giving Naruto the victory sign. This only infuriated Naruto. He tackled Zabuza and the two fell to the ground in a brawl. Anko rolled her eyes at immaturity of the two. Honestly, they act like children. She heard a yawn and turned toward the source. Shikamaru walked in, his face in a lazy expression as usual. He acknowledged Anko with a nod of his head. He sat in a chair, watching the brawl with mild interest. He suddenly grinned and made several hand seals. Ninpo. Shadow imitation. Shikamaru's shadow connected with Naruto's. Shikamaru made Naruto's hand grope Zabuza's crotch. Ya faggot. Zabuza roared and kicked Naruto off. Naruto was pissed. Shikamaru. Naruto bellowed. He made several hand seals that Shikamaru recognized. Naruto began chasing Shikamaru while a raging Zabuza was chasing Naruto. Get back here ya freaking faggot. Zabuza roared. I'm going to make your weights so heavy, you'll have to work to sleep. Naruto bellowed. Troublesome swordsman. Shikamaru yelled. The three ran in circles around the kitchen table. After five minutes Anko got tired of all the noise. Enough. Anko screamed. She pointed her hand at the three screaming idiots. Ninpo. Hidden snake hands. Twelve snakes wrapped themselves around Shikamaru, Naruto, and Zabuza. She lifted the three up and slammed them down on the ground hard. Itai. They screamed. Anko smirked. She drew her kanai and licked it, a sadistic look in her eye that scared the hell out of Naruto, Zabuza, and Shikamaru. Now sit still like good little boys before I get to practice my torture techniques on the three of you. Let me tell you, I'm better than Ibiki at physical pain, Anko said evilly. The Shikamaru and Naruto nodded fearfully. Surprisingly Zabuza nodded as well. Zabuza heard of Ibiki the torturer. His methods of torture are barbaric, painful, and made you wish you were dead at the start. Anko released her snakes. The three sat at the table, barely moving at all. Anko grinned. That's a good boy. Anko cooed as she patted each one on the head like a dog. Tsunami sweat dropped but didn't say a word. The kitchen was completely silent as the two women prepared breakfast. Shikamaru farted once and Naruto giggled. Both of them found a knife quivering, dangerously close to their crotch. Zabuza thanked Kami he still had spent years controlling his emotions. Soon Shino walked in and patiently sat at the table. He immediately noticed Naruto sitting completely still along with an awake Shikamaru. He gave Anko a questioning look. They were too loud in the morning, Anko said. Shino nodded. 
Haku woke up last with Inari behind her. She brightened up when she saw Naruto. Good morning Naruto-kun. Haku said cheerfully and went to hug Naruto. Naruto blushed when he felt Haku's breasts press against his back. She nuzzled his cheek causing Naruto to blush a deep red. Breakfast is ready. Anko called. At that moment, the sound of running water filled the air along with the smell of ammonia. Everyone turned to see the source. Tazuna grunted and yawned. He stood up to see everyone staring at him. What? Shino pointed at his pants. Tazuna gaze followed where Shino was pointing. Ah damn. Awkward after Tazuna washed up and changed, everyone began eating. The breakfast was wonderful. Anko showed her sadistic side when she forbade Naruto, Shikamaru, and Zabuza from eating until everyone was done. All right, Team 7, we're going to guard Tazuna at the bridge while he works, Anko said. Zabuza, Haku, will you join us? Haku nodded because she wanted to spend more time with Naruto. She wanted to make the most out of the time Naruto and her were together. Zabuza agreed because he was scared of Anko. Anko grinned. Good. As they left, Anko turned to Naruto. Naruto, make a dozen clones to protect the house. If Gado knows we're gone, he might send thugs after Tsunami and Inari. Naruto nodded. He made a dozen shadow clones and sent them to guard Tazuna's house. Team 7 headed to the bridge at a casual pace. When they arrived at the bridge, there was nobody there. Tazuna was confused while everyone else had his or her guard up. Where is everyone? Tazuna asked aloud. We sent them away, an oily voice answered. The group turned to see three people standing on the bridge. Zabuza growled. Yazu, the stone bear. Aoi Rokususho, Katsu Kagaya, the spear of the mist. Yazu smiled. Well Zabuza, looked like you switched sides. Good. I was hoping to be the one to kill you. Yazu charged at Zabuza, wielding his humongous axe. Zabuza blocked the axe and kicked Yazu in the stomach. Yazu reeled back and blocked Zabuza's blade. Zabuza pushed Yazu back and channeled Chakra into his sword. Metsujutsu. Chakra wave. Yazu quickly blocked it with his axe, flinching at the power the attack contained. Yazu bit his thumb and made several hand seals. He slammed his hand on the ground. Seals appeared on the ground where he slammed his hand. Summoning Jutsu. Yazu roared. A huge puff of smoke appeared. When the smoke cleared, there was an armored bear carrying in a giant battle axe. The bear growled. Aoi chuckled. Well, let's get started. He threw several umbrellas in the air. As they floated down Aoi made several hand seals. Raining needles. The umbrellas began firing thousands of needles at Team 7 and Tazuna. Food and Great breakthrough. Anko, Naruto, and Shikamaru shouted. Together, they made a whirlwind that knocked all the needles away from them. Naruto, Shino, Shikamaru, go battle him, Anko ordered. Haku guard Tazuna, I'll battle Katsu. The Genins nodded and charged Aoi. Naruto made several seals. Ninpo. Unchaining seal. He poked Shikamaru. Shikamaru immediately sped up much faster to Shikamaru's surprise. It also surprised Aoi who had not expected such speed from a genin. Shikamaru kicked Aoi with harder than Shikamaru thought he could. Aoi managed to block Shikamaru's kick. He jumped back though when a chain shot forward, nearly impaling Aoi. Shino retracted his chain and shot it out again. Aoi jumped up to avoid the chain. Shino smirked. Aoi managed to hear a buzzing sound before he was enshrouded in a mass of kikai bugs. Immediately they began leeching out his chakra at a rapid pace. Shit. Aoi went into the water and dived, managing to rid himself of the kikai bugs. As the three genins waited for him to resurface, Shino removed his weights and Naruto disabled part of his gravity seal. Aoi charged back on the bridge. This time, he was wielding the Nidime's sword. The Thunder Spirit Blade. Naruto gasped. Anko was panting. She glared at Katsu who was breathing a bit heavily. In his hand was a bone-white spear. She couldn't predict the length that damned spear would be. It changed length and shot out like an arrow. It took a lot of her chakra to dodge that spear. Anko bit her thumb. She made several hand seals and slapped the ground. Summoning just Su. A large cloud of smoke appeared. Out of the smoke came several large snakes, each of them 40 feet long and had fangs dripping with poison. Katsu eyed them carefully. 
He had to avoid getting bit by those snakes. Katsu gathered chakra and concentrated. Anko watched in fascination as bone spikes grew out of his body, making him a human porcupine. Shit. Anko thought. With those spikes, Katsu could injure the snakes without moving. Snakes could only attack someone using their fangs and body. No distance attacks. Anko made several seals. Katen, fire dragon. A huge dragon made of fire sped toward Katsu. Katsu dodged it skillfully and stabbed one snake in the head, dispelling it. Another tried to bite Katsu but his spikes impaled the snake through the brain, killing it. Shit. Anko thought. Back into Zuna's house, two of his thugs were heading toward the house. They knocked down the door. Tsunami screamed as they grabbed her. Mom. Tsunami looked to see Inari hiding behind a wall. Inari. Run, she was knocked out by one of the thugs. Hey let me slice up the kid. Gato said we only needed one, one of the thugs said. Make it quick, his partner said. He hoisted Tsunami on his shoulder and watched his partner. Inari ran. He could hear the thug behind him laughing sadistically. He went up to his room and locked it. He went under his bed and pulled out a hunting crossbow Kiaza made for him. He loaded it just when the thug kicked open his door. Inari aimed quickly and fired. The arrow flew straight and true into the thug's neck, killing him instantly. Inari loaded another arrow and went downstairs to see his mom rescued by a Naruto clone. The other thug was dead on the rug. Naruto Nichin. Inari said in delight. He hugged Naruto. Naruto hugged back. I'm proud at you Inari. You defended your mom well with the cunning of a ninja. Inari beamed. Inari. You need to get the villagers to come to the bridge. Gatos has an army of thugs marching their way to the village. They're going to be on the bridge. Inari nodded, scared but determined. Naruto smirked. He gave Inari a thumbs up. Make me proud. Inari bolted out of the door. Naruto went out to help the other clones thin the ranks of Gato's thug army. Meanwhile at the bridge, Zabuza was having the time of his life. Sure he was bleeding but cuts in a bite from that damned bear, but he never had a more fun fight. Yazu was getting very worried. Zabuza had managed to dispel two summoned bears with only Kenjutsu. Yazu knew he had the elemental advantage but would that be enough to defeat Zabuza? Sweden. Water shark missile. Yazu looked up to see a water blast in the shape of a shark head toward him. Yazu dodged it but was slapped by the flat side of Zabaza's blade. Yazu flew away bouncing a bit. Come on. Is that all you have? Zabuza roared. He faltered when Yazu crumbled into dirt. Zabuza turned to see Yazu making a long chain of hand seals. Doden. Stone bear landslide. A huge number of bear golems made of rock charged him. Yazu smiled, no one ever survived this jutsu. Orararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararararar
Kikai Meteor. The huge mass of bugs slammed into Aoi, breaking his spine. Aoi screamed in pain as the Kikai bugs drained all of Aoi's chakra, killing him. Shino and Shikamaru fell to the ground dead tired. They had used a lot of their chakra wearing the fast Junin down. Naruto smiled. He went to Aoi's corpse and cut off his head for the bounty. He stored inside a scroll and retrieved the Nidime sword. Naruto held it reverently. Don't worry. You're going back home, he whispered. It might have been his imagination but he could have sworn that the sword gave a small pulse. Naruto stored it carefully in his pocket. He looted Aoi's pockets and found lots of money and a good amount of equipment. Naruto heard a shriek of pain. He saw Anko on his knees with a spear protruding out of her shoulder. Nearby, Haku was lying face down, a huge wound on her back. Haku. Haku was spending the last moments of her fading consciousness reviewing what had happened moments ago. She saw Anko having a hard time so she encased Tazuna in a large ice dome and went to help Anko. Haku kicked Katsu away from Anko. Katsu stepped back and observed the newcomer. Well well. I didn't expect to see a high out in user to be here. Haku said nothing and threw several Senban needles at Katsu. Katsu smirked and held his arms out. Haku gasped when she saw her Senbans deflect off Katsu's chest. This is my bloodline, Shikatsumyaku. I can manipulate the bones in my body to make them as hard as steel. If you can't find a way around this, you're dead, Katsu explained. Katsu charged at Haku with incredible speed. She dodged the spear but flew back due to a kick that hit her in the stomach. She landed on her feet but coughed up blood. He's so powerful. I'll have to use it if I had a chance, Haku thought. She stood up and made one-handed seals. Hyouden. Demonic ice mirrors. Katsu watched as mirrors began to form all around him. He watched in interest as she melted into one of the mirrors. Hyouden. Thousand flying water needles of death. At once thousands of Senban flew toward Katsu. Katsu rolled his eyes and spun his spear. He deflected all the Senban with ease. It that all? Katsu asked. I'm disappointed. Hyouden. Glacier grenade. Haku jumped from one mirror to another while firing an ice orb at Katsu. The ice orbs exploded into flying shrapnel. Katsu raised an eyebrow. He concentrated his chakra and formed a suit of bone armor that protected him from the shrapnel. I'm bored, Katsu stated. He slashed at Haku. She fell down hard on the ground, bleeding heavily. All of her ice mirrors and the ice dome protecting Tazuna shattered. Anko watched as Haku was defeated. She rushed to engage him in a taijutsu match but was quickly defeated. She screamed as Katsu stabbed his sword in her shoulder. Haku. Katsu looked to see a blonde genin wielding a sword. He sighed. He was getting bored of these weaklings. He swung his spear at Naruto. Naruto caught it in his hand and snapped it in his hand. What the hell? Katsu yelled. Naruto grinned. I recognize that bloodline, Shikatsumyaku. It manipulates bones to a user's shape and hardness. Katsu nodded. How did you break my speak? Naruto waved his hand. He gathered enough chakra so it could be seen. Instead of a normal bright blue, Naruto's chakra was a dark blue-green color. My chakra specifically attacks any bloodline limit making it useless. Katsu's eyes widened. Finger bullets. Katsu watched as his finger bullets turned into powder upon impact with Naruto. He charged Naruto with a bone blade. When it connected with Naruto, it turned into powder. Naruto punched Katsu in the face. Katsu was knocked back. Katsu was horrified to feel that his bones were fractured. Naruto glared at Katsu and flared out his chakra to the maximum. Katsu was frightened at the sheer amount of power Naruto had. Naruto sheathed his sword and settled into a kenjutsu stance. Run. Katsu turned to run. He went three steps before he heard Naruto. Iijutsu. Demon wheel. Katsu watched in horror as a giant buzzsaw roll faster than he could react. Katsu's body was split cleanly in half. Naruto watched in satisfaction as the two halves of Katsu fell to the ground. He hurried to Haku's side where Anko was treating Haku the best she could. Haku. Naruto cradled her body in his arms. Haku please. Haku's face was extremely pale. Naruto could only hear a faint gasp as she was trying to breathe. Kayubi. Give me your damned chakra so I can heal her, Naruto demanded. But Kit. My chakra has a 50% chance of killing her. 
Do it. Kayubi released some of her chakra. Naruto channeled it to Haku's wound. The wound closed up and disappeared without a trace. Soon Naruto felt Haku's gentle breathing. She opened her eyes. Naruto-kun. Naruto began crying tears of happiness. He thought he lost her. He hugged her tightly. Haku was crying also. She thought she would never see Naruto's face again. Inside Naruto's mind, Kayubi was amazed. It was a miracle. Her chakra along with Naruto's bloodline would have definitely killed Haku. Instead, it healed her at such a rapid rate. Naruto must have willed Kayubi's and his own chakra to heal her perfectly. Zabuza limped to see Haku and Naruto hugging each other tightly. He could see so much real love in their eyes. He looked down to hide a tear coming down his face. His little girl was growing up so fast. Anko watched the scene in contentment. They really were perfect for each other. It reminded her so much of her and Aruka's first, without the guy and Lee, and the confused Kakashi. Tazuna walked toward them. He looked at the happy couple and silently prayed for their happiness. He reached for a flask of special sake and toasted to the couple's happiness. Shikamaru smirked as the couple and smirked. He was happy for his friends despite him controlling Naruto to make him do perverted actions. He looked at Shino to see his reaction and sweat dropped. Shino was bawling his eyes out. He was also shouting, Aouayu you, so touching, I ain't crying, bastards. Um Shino, Shikamaru said. Well, well, a snide voice said. The group turned to see nearly a hundred bandits on the bridge. Many of them were sporting fresh cuts and stab wounds. There was one with a huge slash on his face. In the front was a short man. He was responsible for the depression of Wave. Finally the kingpin, Gato appeared. His fine clothes were ripped in multiple places and he had a deep cut in his face. The man inspected the bridge with an uncaring eye. His eyes widened when he saw all three of his hired ninjas slain, lying in a pool of blood. He let out a small gasp when he saw Ketsu's body split head to toe at half. He then gave a grin. Good job on eliminating my ninjas. They wanted a high paycheck. At least I don't have to pay so much. Bandits are so much cheaper and effective in large groups. I know they are good fighters though, so I bet a hundred bandits will be enough to wipe out a group of tired ninjas," Gato said. There was some truth in the statement. Anko, Shino, Shikamaru, and Haku were too weak to fight. However, Zabuza and Naruto were able to fight. Zabuza was still able to fight because he still had a majority of his chakra left. Naruto's massive reserves were barely tapped. Hey Gato! A voice shouted out. An arrow flew above the ninjas and landed at Gato's feet. Gato and his army along with the ninjas turned to see who it was. It was Inari. He wore a wide and confident smile. Behind him were all the village men in wave. Everyone was carrying some sort of weapon. Naruto saw oars, hatchets, pitchforks, knives, clubs, staffs, and an amazing variety of weapons. He snickered when he saw one belligerent old man wave his walking stick at the bandits. Gato gulped. This was not supposed to happen. He turned to his bandits. Kill them all. I'll let you have the wealth and women in the village for yourselves, Gato shouted. The bandits charged, eager for plunder and slaves charged eagerly. What can untrained villagers do against an army of bandits? Naruto stood up and drew his sword. Nay, Zabuza. What brat? Zabuza asked. First one to kill Gato gets a bottle of sake. Whoever kills the least number of bandits has to walk around for a whole day. You in? Naruto said. Zabuza grinned. I hope you're ready to walk around. The morning winds get very chilly, if you know what I mean. Naruto grinned. The two settled into a kenjutsu stance. When the first bandit was twenty feet from them, they charged. After the mission, Shino could only describe the battle between the bandit and the two swordsmen as a massacre. Naruto and Zabuza tore through the mob like how a shark attacks a group of seals. The bandits had no chance at all. Geysers of blood flew in the air, painting the bridge in blood. Screams of pain attracted crows and ravens to a feast. Limbs were sliced off, throats cut open, skulls cleaved open, and organs spilled out as Naruto and Zabuza swung and stabbed with their swords, brutally destroying the bandits. Naruto stabbed the last bandit in the chest. He grunted as he ripped his sword from the man's chest. He looked at Zabuza, who was leaning on his sword. How many? Fifty bandits, Zabuza grunted. Fifty also, Naruto said. 
Zabuza and Naruto turned to Gato. Gato was trembling in fear. His army first numbering 200 but lost 100 to ninja clones in the forest. Then these two demons decimated the rest brutally. Naruto and Zabuza charged. Gato began running for his life. He wasn't fast enough though. Naruto and Zabuza easily caught up to him and sliced him into three pieces. Naruto and Zabuza inspected their work. A mass of bodies was piled high on the bridge, lying in a veritable pond of blood. Shit. It's a tie again, Naruto said. You know what this means, brat, Zabuza said. Jan Ken Pon. The two shouted. Zabuza got rock while Naruto had paper. I win. In your face, Naruto shouted while dancing. You lucky son of a, bleep, ing, bleep, 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 b l e e e e e e e e e p, Zabuza bellowed. Naruto grinned and gave him the victory sign. The villagers and the ninja's sweat dropped at the immaturity of the two vicious warriors. How can such merciless warriors bicker like children? Inari was shocked at the bloodshed but began shouting in happiness. What are you shouting about? A man asked. Don't you see? Without Gato, wave is free. Inari shouted with joy. The realization struck the villagers. All of them began shouting in joy. They began throwing objects and hats in the air. Many began hugging and dancing. More than one person shed tears of joy. Team 7, Zabuza, and Haku watched the villagers. Moments such as these make all the horrors of a ninja worth it. Anko and Haku cried a bit in happiness. Shino was bawling in happiness as Naruto, Zabuza and Shikamaru smiled widely. The ninjas were soon carried on the shoulders of the villagers back to wave. For three days, the villagers celebrated. Zabuza and Naruto along with a group of villagers raided the bandits' camp and Gato's storehouses. They brought the food and money they found to spread among the villagers. In the three days, they celebrated by finishing construction of the bridge and cleaning it of the bodies. Naruto collected Katsu's and Yazu's head for the bounty. While Naruto carried Yazu's corpse to dump in a pile, a scroll fell out. Naruto used the blood from Yazu to open it. His eyes widened. It was the summoning contract for bears. Naruto opened it to look to see who signed it. After Yazu, there was another name he did not recognize. Next to it was the name Akamichi. Several names with the name Akamichi also signed it. Naruto stored the scroll in one of his storage scrolls. It rightfully belonged to the Akamichis. Anyway, he already signed the Toad contract along with two other contracts in his travels. He didn't need any more. The villagers burned the corpses in a bonfire and carried on celebrating. During that time Anko, Tazuna, and Zabuza got drunk multiple times. Shikamaru and Shino celebrated with the villagers. Haku and Naruto had the time of their lives. One morning, Naruto asked if he could talk with Zabuza and Anko in private. They were curious but agreed. They met in Tazuna's kitchen. So brat, what's up? Zabuza asked. After this trip is over, I want to know if you want to stop being missing ninjas and start a new life in Konoha, Naruto said. Zabuza was curious. Even if we did, do you think the Hokage will let us join Konoha? I'm an S-class nin and former Miss Junin. What reason would they have for letting me join? You would be a great addition among Konoha. You are a former member of the Seven Swordsmen and a master at silent killing, Kenjutsu, and Sweden Jutsus. Haku also possesses a bloodline and a powerful one at that. If that isn't enough, I can persuade several council members, Naruto explained. How? Anko asked. Naruto smirked. He opened his storage scroll and retrieved the bear summoning contract. Anko gasped. That isn't a summoning contract, is it? Anko asked. Naruto nodded. Look at the names. Anko opened it. Akamichi? Yep. I can also persuade Shikamaru and Shino to persuade their fathers to vote for Zabuza. Also, once you fill out your report Anko, the council will see how powerful I am and want to be on my good side, Naruto said. Anko and Zabuza were shook their heads. The impossible seemed to be likely if Naruto tried it. Zabuza grinned. Well brat, where would Haku and I live? You could stay at my place until you get settled, Naruto said. Well, I'm going to ask Haku, Zabuza said. He left to find Haku. Anko and Naruto winced when a ear-splitting squeal reached their ears. Zabuza came back, a bit cross-eyed and wiggling his ear. She says yes. Thanks, I couldn't tell, Anko said sarcastically. Zabuza glared at her. 
Anko Sensei, you should send a letter to the Hokage before we leave, Naruto suggested. And how do we do that? Anko asked. Naruto smirked. He bit his thumb and made several hand seals. He then slapped his hand on the ground. Summoning Jutsu. A cloud of smoke appeared. The smoke cleared up to reveal a large raven the size of a dog. On its back was a round tube with the kanji speed. The raven bowed to Naruto. Hello Naruto-sama. Might I inquire the reason you summoned me? The raven asked in a polite voice. I need a letter delivered as fast as possible to the Hokage of Konoha. It is of great importance to me. Can you do it, Yuru? Yuru nodded. I am honored that you chose me to deliver this letter. I shall deliver it to the best of my ability. Anko did not bother trying to deny the existence of a raven contract. She quickly wrote the letter and gave it to Naruto. Naruto placed the letter in the tube and closed it. May the winds bless your trip, Naruto said to Yuru. And the stars guide you well, Yuru replied. Yuru spread his wings and flew off with amazing speed. In less than a second, Yuru couldn't be seen. Naruto turned to see Anko and Zabuza staring. What? Is there anything you can't do? Zabuza asked. Anko nodded. I can't fold my tongue, Naruto admitted. Zabuza and Anko sweat dropped. The next day everyone was gathered at the bridge. They wanted to say goodbye to the ninjas that saved their country. Inari struggled not to cry as he said goodbye. The villagers had gathered enough money from Gado's storehouses to pay for the mission and give each ninja a bonus that was equal to an S rank mission pay while still having enough to rebuild wave. Naruto patted Inari's head. Hey, make sure you grow big and strong so you can protect this village. With us gone, I'm counting on you. All right, Inari. Inari nodded, struggling no to cry. Okay, Naruto Nisan, I promise to protect every person in wave. Naruto grinned. That's my little bro. Inari beamed and waved goodbye to the ninjas as they left. Hum. I forgot to name this bridge, Tazuna said, causing many villagers to sweat drop. Oh I know. The pride of great builder Tazuna. The path of sake. Tsunami slapped her father. We are not naming this bridge after sake. Tsunami said sternly. How about the great Naruto bridge? Inari said. Many of the villagers nodded. It was a great name. The great Naruto bridge. The villagers shouted. They cheered and christened the bridge with a bottle of sake. The trip to Konoha was uneventful. The group took their time traveling. The Genins and Haku trained constantly. They also made drastic improvements under the rigorous training of Zabuza and Anko. Naruto now had a formidable arsenal of Sweden Jutsus. Shino was proficient enough with his chain to take on Zabuza and wound Zabuza at full strength. Shikamaru was extremely stealthy and was able to consistently catch Anko in his shadow imitation jutsu before she noticed. Haku became faster and able to hold her mirrors longer while performing a various number of Sweden, Fudan, and Hayouden jutsus. When they got to Konoha, an Anbu captain and his team escorted the group to the Hokage Tower. The Hokage dismissed the Anbu ninjas, in order to speak with the group privately. When the Anbu left, the Hokage picked up a sheet of paper. Naruto recognized it as Anko's letter. Well, it looks like you had a very exciting mission. Instead of a simple C-class mission, it turned into a high A-rank mission. Defeating two missed chunins, allying with a former member of the Seven Swordsmen and his apprentice, bringing down one of the richest people in the world, liberating the country of Wave, and slaying two A-rank junins and an S-rank Kagaya. I must say, I am deeply impressed, the Hokage said, pride evident in his voice. Team 7 smiled. Naruto blushed and rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment. The Hokage turned to Zabuza and Haku. I understand that you two want to be Konoha nins. Why? To put it simply, I'm tired of running and being chased by hunter nins constantly. I also did not want Haku to spend such life when she has done nothing wrong, Zabuza said. The Hokage nodded. Well after hearing your reasons and reading Anko's report, you and Haku will be inducted as Konoha Nins after a six-month probationary period. If you are judged trustworthy, you will become Konoha Nins with all the privileges and rights as one trained here. Zabuza and Haku nodded. The Hokage dismissed all of them. Wait a second Hokage-sama. Everyone turned to see Naruto reach into his coat. He pulled out a cylinder. It looked like a sword handle without the sword. Naruto reverently handed it to the Hokage. The Hokage's eyes widened. Naruto, as this. Yes, 
the personal sword of the Naidame Hokage, the Thunder Spirit Blade, Naruto said. The Hokage channeled chakra into the handle. A blade, crackling with energy appeared. The Hokage stopped channeling chakra and watched as they blade vanished. Thank you, Naruto. It is a relief that a relic from one of our greatest heroes have been returned to Konoha. Naruto bowed and left with his team. As soon as they left the Hokage Tower, Naruto asked Shikamaru a question. Hey Shikamaru, do you know where the Akamichi clan house is? Shikamaru nodded. Yeah, the Akimich clan house is right near the Nara clan house. I can show it to you right now. Naruto followed Shikamaru to the Akamichi clan house. The Akamichi clan house was a humble house, big but not showy and exuded a sense of comfort and safety. Shikamaru knocked on the door. Hello? A large man answered the door. He had shaggy red hair and wore armor with kanji for eat on it. Despite his warrior-like appearance, he had a gentle face. He looked down and smiled. Hi Shikamaru, if you're looking for Choji he's with his team right now, the man said. Shikamaru shook his head. Actually, I was showing Naruto where the Akamichi clan house was. I assume he has something to tell or give you. Naruto decided to speak up. Akamichi-san, has your family ever had a summoning contract? It's Shuza and yes we did. However, my grandfather's contract was stolen by an Iwa Nin during the Third Great Ninja War, Shuza asked confused. What animal was it with? Naruto asked. Shikamartu was confused. What was going on? The bears. Why are you asking these questions, Naruto? Shuza asked. Just a test to see if this really belonged to the Akamichis, Shuza, Naruto said with a grin. He pulled out a storage scroll and retrieved the bear summoning contract. He handed the large scroll to Shuza. Shuza opened it and his eyes widened. Where did you get this? Shuza asked. An Iwa Nin by the name of Yazu held it. I was lucky enough to find it in one of the storage scrolls Yazu had on his person. Shuza smiled widely. This calls for a meal. Come inside. Shuza literally pushed the two genins inside his house. He thanked the genins by giving them huge amounts of food inside scrolls. Naruto thanked Shuza. Now he wouldn't have to buy food and save up for now. Shuza merely grinned and said that Naruto is a friend of the Akamichi family and can always come back for a free meal. Shikamaru headed home mumbling about sleeping in a bed. Naruto just shook his head at the lazy Nara. He headed to the training fields to find Kakashi's team training. Sasuke was preparing to launch a Katen Jutsu but the sight of Naruto made him so angry that Sasuke overloaded the Jutsu with chakra and it exploded in his face. He fell backwards from the blast but quickly got back onto his feet. You! Sasuke yelled pointing as Naruto. Kakashi looked up from his book and saw Sasuke angrily pointing at someone. He looked on in curiosity. Looks like the mere sight of Naruto pushed Sasuke to the edge. Kakashi Sensei. That's the person who ambushed Sasuke kun before one of our missions, Sakura said. Kakashi was even more interested. So he's the person that managed to knock Sasuke and Sakura in the hospital for several days. Look, Sasuke, I have no interest in fighting with you every time I see you. Do you remember our last fight? Naruto asked. He took several steps closer until he was five feet away from him. Do you remember my warning? Sasuke flushed in anger. He made several hand seals. Kakashi's eye widened. He made to intercept the jutsu but Sasuke released it before Kakashi could stop it. Kaden. Fire Dragon Flame Missile. A huge flame came from Sasuke's mouth and hit point blank at Naruto. Kakashi knew he was in deep shit. His pupil deliberately killed a fellow shinobi. The same shinobi was a favorite of the Hokage. He hoped he would at least be a Tokabetsu Junin at the end of this fiasco. Kakashi noticed something. There was no scream or groan of pain. He looked closely at Naruto. Naruto was still in flames but it was as if the flames did not hurt him. Naruto grabbed a piece of fire from his shoulder and ate it. Kakashi's eye bulged. That was simply against the laws of this world yet Naruto was calmly eating fire off of his body. Naruto soon ate all the fire off and belched a small bit of smoke. Sasuke, use your brain. I showed you in our last encounter that fire doesn't work against me yet you still used a katan jutsu against me, Naruto said. Naruto turned to see Kakashi staring at him. Copycat Ninja. Kakashi of the Sharingan. Renowned in the ninja world for copying and mastering over a thousand jutsus, Naruto said. Kakashi nodded. 
also suffers from being chronically late, creates bad excuses, and reads Smut 24-7. Kakashi glared indignantly. He read Smut 23, 55 sevenths. You must be Naruto. The Hokage told me of your genin exam. He said you were a prodigy amongst prodigies. Sasuke glared angrily. I must gain more power. Once I get the Sharingan, I will become more powerful than Naruto, than Itachi, Sasuke thought. Naruto looked around. Where's Kiba? He's working with his mother learning and improving clan jutsus, Kakashi said. Naruto looked at the Sasuke. Sasuke was glaring at him. Naruto sighed. Kakashi-san, will you be the referee for a fight between Sasuke and I? Naruto asked politely. Kakashi looked at Sasuke. He was itching for a fight. Kakashi sighed. It would be better to let Naruto to spar with Sasuke. Sasuke's ego has been getting too big. The match will have no rules other than no killing or permanent injuries, Kakashi announced. Will the two combatants come here? Sasuke and Naruto stood ten feet apart with Kakashi between them. Begin. Kakashi jumped out of the way as Sasuke sent several kanais and shurikens at Naruto. Naruto plucked them out of the air and sent them back at Sasuke. Sasuke dodged them and engaged Naruto in a taijutsu match. Tekai. Naruto grunted. His muscles expanded and compacted as chakra went through the muscles, making them as hard as steel. Naruto stood still as Sasuke kicked and punched him at a rapid rate that soon slowed down. Naruto smirked as Sasuke realized that none of his attacks were affecting Naruto. Naruto pushed Sasuke off of him. As Sasuke stumbled back, Naruto channeled chakra to his legs and kicked out in Sasuke's direction. Ranyaku. A chakra blade flew out and slammed into Sasuke. Sasuke lost consciousness almost instantly. Naruto gave Sasuke a disdainful look. Kakashi, tell him if he ever wants a chance to match me, he must have something to fight for. Naruto left, ignoring a screaming Sakura. He went over to Shino's house for a decent spar. Naruto knocked on the door to the Abarame clan house. The door opened to reveal Shibi Abarame, Shino's father. Naruto bowed. Good afternoon Abarame-san. May I speak to Shino? Shibi said nothing but gestured to Naruto to follow him. Shibi led Naruto to the Abarame training field where Shino was sparring against another Abarame. The Abarame Shino was fighting was hard pressed to defend himself against Shino's bugs, Shino's fire jutsus, and his chain. Soon, Shino's chain wrapped against his opponent's leg. Shino tugged hard and swung him hard. The Abarame was slammed against a training post and knocked out. Shibi lightly applauded his son's skill. The Abarame Shino had faced was one of the top chunins in the Abarame clan. For Shino to defeat him as a genin showed Shino's potential to be the greatest Abarame. Naruto ran up to Shino and slapped him on the back. Way to go Shino. You want to spar with me next? Shino nodded. Both of them took their positions and waited. Shibi was curious to see how this would turn out. He had heard rumors from many of the junins that this Naruto managed to lead Shino and Shikamaru in a plan that allowed them to pass Anko's nearly impossible test. Since then, they have displayed exemplary teamwork and have gained the reputation as the rookie team of the generation. Under Naruto's advice, Shino diversified his abilities to not only include clan jutsu but also weapons, ninjutsu, taijutsu, and genjutsu and combine them together. It has only been three months but Shino was able to take down a junin with the help of Shikamaru and Naruto. Naruto moved first. He drew and thrust his sword at Shino in one fluid movement. Itoryu. Cannon. A large orb much faster than Naruto's bullet slammed into Shino. Shino exploded into bugs. The bugs then flew toward Naruto seeking to drain his chakra. Ninpo. Shadow clone jutsu. Naruto made five clones to block the bugs while Naruto searched for Shino. Naruto grinned when he spotted a flash of white in the bug cloud. Metsujutsu. Chakra wave. Naruto swung his sword into a section of the bug cloud. Shino was knocked out of the cloud by a blade of chakra. Shino quickly made hand seals and blew. Kaden. Heat wave. Shino blew for a five seconds. When he finished, he disappeared back into the bug cloud. Naruto frowned. Thanks to the Shino's jutsu, any food and jutsus will be off target due to the displacement in air pressure. Naruto had an idea and made several hand seals. Sweden. Ice fog. A chilling mist surrounded the field. 
it countered with Shino's heat wave causing the air to be extremely moist. Ninpo. Chakra Pulse. Naruto sent a small pulse of chakra to find Shino. Gotcha. Naruto made a long series of seals, Sweeten, Water Dragon. A humongous water dragon formed from the water vapor in the air and slammed into Shino, soaking him to the bone. His bugs cannot fly when wet and he was unable to stand. Naruto held out a hand and helped him up. Great spar Shino, you almost had me there several times, Naruto said. Shino nodded. The two turned to see Shibi clapping loudly. Wonderful match. I must say, I now believe that the Abarame clan must start to diversify. Our bugs are useful tools but we must also not rely on one trump card to win a battle, Shibi said to Shino. Well, see you Shino, Naruto said, he left and went to his apartment. He opened the door to see Haku walking in a towel. Naruto quickly closed the door, counted to ten, and went back in. Welcome home Naruto-kun. Zabuza is walking around Konoha at the moment. I hope he does not get lost. He has a terrible sense of direction, Haku said. Meanwhile, Zabuza was muttering to himself trying to find a store to buy sake. Let's see. The guy said to go north for a block and then west for two blocks. North is always coldest and west is my left side. Needless to say with that kind of directional skills, Zabuza was hopelessly lost. Back at the apartment, Naruto arranged the furniture so that Haku had her own room while he shared one with Zabuza. Naruto went down to a nearby furniture store with Haku to pick up stuff for the apartment. They bought a dresser for Haku and Zabuza, two small tables, two futons, two armchairs, and collapsible boxes for storage. The apartment was a little crowded but cozy. Naruto was going to enjoy living with Haku and Zabuza. Naruto filled the refrigerator with the food Shuza had given him. There were several pounds of meat, lots of fruits and vegetables, flour, rice, and milk. Naruto was surprised to find spices included. With this food, Naruto made some dombori gyudon, rice, stir-fried vegetables, and beef, and mixed fruit for desert. Since Zabuza was hopelessly lost around Konoha, Haku and Naruto had a pleasant dinner all to themselves. They soon went to sleep waiting for Zabuza. Meanwhile, Zabuza was pissed. He had wound up in the gay district of Konoha multiple times and was tired of being chased by gay drunks. He turned around a corner to see receive full blast that god awful genjutsu. Lee. Guy sensei. What the bleep is wrong with this village? The next morning, Naruto went out to meet his team. He left Haku note to tell her where he was. On his way, he found Zabuza in an alley. He was lying in the fetal position crying. Oi Zabuza. You okay? Naruto. Zabuza started crying on relief. Thank Kami. I got lost and wound up in the gay district and had to run away. I went around the corner to see two freaks in spandex shouting and hugging. Then this scene appeared. It was horrible. Horrible I tell you. Naruto slapped the slightly hysterical man. Snap out of it. Zabuza became his normal self again. Zabuza listen. Go straight down this road for seven blocks. Then take a right and walk for two blocks. On the left side there is an apartment complex. Our room is 726. Haku is still asleep. I left some of last night's dinner in the kitchen. Zabuza nodded. Those directions were simple enough. He began walking to the apartment. Naruto sighed. Why are there no normal ninjas? Naruto met his team at training ground 26. After meeting with their sensei, they completed 10 D rank missions in record time. They also completed two C rank missions simultaneously. They went back to training ground 26 before being dismissed. At training ground 26, Anko gave each of them a slip of paper. Anko sensei, what are these? Shikamaru asked. These are tickets for you to compete in the Chunin exams. The Chunin exams? Shino asked. Aren't we a little too unprepared to take it? Anko laughed. You're joking. This team is more ready for the exam than any other in Konoha. Naruto smirked. Shino, have we met an enemy that we couldn't defeat? Heck, we killed a Junin without our sensei. If you still feel like we're unprepared, we'll spar more at you house. Yeah, Shino don't worry about it, Shikamaru said. Anyway, we got Naruto Taicho to lead us to victory. Remember in wave he slew that Katsu guy. I'm pretty sure he'll back us up if we get in a pinch. Anko laughed. This exam will be very interesting. 
Team 7 spent the next month and a half before the Chunin exams juggling training, C-rank missions, and the two low B-rank missions, and strategizing. The training was intense as Anko placed Shikamaru and Shino in extreme situations such as in a pit with giant snakes wearing hundred-pound weights on their limbs. Naruto often sparred with Haku, Zabuza, and Anko at the same time without his sword or ninjutsu. Anko also taught them several useful genjutsus. Shikamaru and Shino also trained with their fathers in clan jutsus. Thanks to their fathers, Shikamaru and Shino learned more advanced and deadly jutsus. Due to the complete success of the mission to wave, the Hokage granted Team 7 the privilege of C-rank missions and some low B-rank missions, despite some of the council's protests that Sasuke should also gain this privilege. However, the protests stopped when time after time, Team 7 performed the missions flawlessly and in record time. So far the mission count Team 7 had done was 29 D-rank, 17 C-rank, 3 B-rank, and 1 A-rank. Anko was truly proud of her team. They kicked ass. Their teamwork was perfect. They knew their jobs and roles in the team. Shino was the tracker, scout, and support in the group. Shikamaru was the stealth, strategizing, capturing expert in the group. Naruto was the leader and the primary assault expert in the group. Team 7 with Shino's logic, Shikamaru's strategy, and Naruto's leadership, they were among the likely candidates to pass the Chunin exams. The week before the exam, Anko had the team to scout out the local competition. Shino and Shikamaru often did this by stealth. Since they were trained by a stealth specialist, the two often were undiscovered unless if a Junin detected them. The two collected info from the teams of rain, mist, grass, and sound. None of them were a serious threat to Team 7. Naruto visited the Konoha teams and also the Sand Genins. Amongst the Konoha teams, his Amiya cable nature and good will earn him the trust of some leaf teams. Others were distrustful of Naruto and sometimes attacked him. When that did happen, Naruto often defeated them easily and intimidating them out of the exams. Naruto found out that all the rookies were taking the Chunin exams. Team 8, Kurinai's team consisted of Hanada, Ino, and Choji. The three worked well together as a tracking and capture alive team. Team 10, Kakashi's team were the exact opposite. It was a mostly assault team with Sakura as support. However, their teamwork was extremely bad as Kiba was alienated by his other two teammates. Naruto met the sand team quite by accident. It began with him strolling down the street looking for his teammates. However, he saw a group of children run afoul of two sand genins, a girl and a guy. Naruto recognized one of the children as Konohamaru, grandson of the Hokage. He decided to step in when one of the genins picked Konohamaru up in a hostile manner. Naruto switched places with Konohamaru and punched the genin in the face. The genin fell down with a bloody nose. His teammate began to reach for a large fan on her back but froze when Naruto instantly had his katana pointing at her throat. You know, if you're visiting a foreign village, you should attract as little attention as possible. Thrashing the Hokage's grandson just because he accidentally bumped into you is definitely asking for trouble, Naruto drawled. He watched as the girl glared at her teammate who paled under his thick face paint. Naruto smelled the air and detected a ninja smelling of dust and blood hiding in a tree. Whoever you are come out. I can smell you in the tree nearby, Naruto called out. The ninja who was hiding came out. He was shorter than Naruto, had red hair, and a large gourd on his back. It was his eyes that stood out the most though. They were dead looking but glinted as if the ninja was hiding something. Naruto noticed out of the corner of his eye that the two genins he met were pale white and sweating like crazy. Gara, we, the painted ninja stammered. Gara looked at him. Shut up before I kill you, Gara said almost without concern. Naruto saw the paint start to dribble by the huge amount of sweat coming down the painted genin's face. Gara turned back to Naruto. My apologies for my teammates. They have been eager to compete. Much too eager. Naruto sheathed his katana. No problem. Here's a tip. Don't attract too much attention. That way, you'll have a better chance in the exams. Gara nodded. Thank you for this advice. I'll be looking for you in the exam. Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto said. Gara nodded. Until next time. Kankoru. Tamari. Let's go. Naruto watched the sand genins go. He felt something familiar when he was talking to Gara. Something familiar and dangerous. Naruto shrugged. He turned to see the three children that had bumped into the San Genin. 
They were looking at him with adoring eyes. You're so cool Nissan, they said in unison. Naruto sweat dropped. Thanks but who are you? I know Konohamaru by the old man but not you two squirts, Naruto said. The girl in the group spoke up first. My name's Moegi. And I'm Udon, the kid in the glasses said. My name's Naruto Uzumaki. Pleased to meet you, Naruto said. Can you teach us to be strong? Konohamaru asked. Naruto grunted in disbelief. Please Nissan. Moegi asked. All three were making the puppy eyes, pouting look. Damn, Naruto thought. I still can't resist that look. Do you want to be strong? Naruto asked. The three nodded eagerly. Then my first challenge is to prank several chunins and some junins at the same time. Purposely let them see you and outlast them in a chase, Naruto said. The three tilted their heads in confusion. Why Naruto Nissan? Konohamaru asked. Planting pranks takes stealth. Outrunning them takes strength and stamina. Having such a number caught in prank at the same time takes cunning. These three things are the abilities a ninja must have to be the best, Naruto explained. Now when you are able to do that three times in a row, that tells me you will be ready to be taught the secrets of the ninja. The children nodded. When we do, you'll teach us right? Naruto grinned. I'll teach you my favorite moves if you're able to guys. What are we waiting for? Konohamaru shouted. Moegi, get some eggs and flour. Udon get some string, scissors, and nails. I'll get some rulers and stuff. Let's meet at Ojiazan's office in two hours. Udon and Moegi nodded. They bolted, eager start. Naruto chuckled as they ran as fast as their little legs could carry them. He chuckled, knowing he released a scourge on the ninjas of Konoha. You do know it'll be years before they complete the task, Kayubi said. If they still persevere through all the failures, I'll know if they have the willpower to keep striving to be the best even in times of darkness and pain, Naruto responded. Kayubi was impressed by Naruto's answer. He was right. Even the weakest ninja can defeat a prodigy if they were determined enough. As the week ended, Team 7 was fully prepared for the Chunin exam. They knew the most of the competition's ability and prowess and were confident that they could beat them. Each of them were relatively well balanced in Taijutsu. Genjutsu, and Ninjutsu. Naruto admitted that Garo was the only that worried him. They made a note to avoid the sand team as long as possible. Anko told them the details and time of the test. When she finished she had final words to say. I want you to be careful. Listen to Naruto as he is experienced enough to lead you. Naruto, listen to Shino's and Shikamaru's advice as they are smart enough to avoid useless battles and accidents. There is a high chance of death in these exams so show don't goof off. Anko warned. I also want to say I am proud of all of you. You are known as the strongest genin team in Konoha and deserve it. It is likely you'll return as chunins and soon junins. I hope you pass and make yourselves, me, your family, and Konoha proud, Anko said, her eyes watery. She gave them a group hug. Oh wait, we need to get a picture before you go, Anko exclaimed. She pulled out a camera and made a shadow clone. The shadow clone took the camera and held it up. Now get a bit closer. That's good. Now everyone get ready. One, two, three. Say sushi, the Anko clone said. Sushi. Everyone said. Afterwards, the picture turned out great. Shino and Shikamaru flanked Naruto while Anko was behind them. Naruto and Anko had huge grins on their faces while Shino and Shikamaru had smaller smiles. Behind the group were several trees and the Hokage monument being illuminated by the sunset. Now. Report to room 301 in the academy building at 9 o'clock sharp. Good luck, Anko said. The Genins headed to their homes. Naruto went straight back to the apartment. He opened it to see Haku cooking dinner and Zabuza drinking sake. Hello Naruto-kun. I'm making yakitori and gyoza. Does that sound good to you? Haku said. Yeah that does sound good, Naruto said. Naruto placed some plates and chopsticks on the table and patiently waited for dinner. So brat, do you think you're ready? Zabuza asked. Naruto nodded. Zabuza grinned. Good. Now I want to see you pass. I can't have my sparring partner to always be a genin. At least as a chunin, you won't be thought of as a mama's boy who needs his mama to guide him in missions. Zabuza smirked as Naruto glared at him. Haku smiled a bit and served dinner. The dinner was delicious. They ate a small quiet dinner together everyone enjoying the first dinner they had together in a month. 
After dinner, everyone went to bed. As Naruto came back from the bathroom, he saw Haku in his futon. Haku what are you doing in my futon? Naruto asked. Haku pouted. I wanted to sleep in the same futon with you. Naruto sighed. You do know Zabuza shares the same room as me? Haku shook her head. Not anymore. I convinced Zabuza to switch rooms with him. Naruto sighed, knowing he wasn't going to win this conversation. He lifted the covers of the futon to reveal Haku wearing only a Naruto's t-shirt and panties. Naruto nearly had a nosebleed. Naruto laid in his futon and blushed as Haku hugged him tightly. Make sure you come back, Naruto. I wouldn't know what to do if you died, Haku whispered. Naruto turned to face her. I promise I will not die. I come back, stronger than before. Naruto and Haku closed the distances between their faces. They ed passionately and lovingly. Haku hugged Naruto fiercely as they made out. It was a first for both of them and it shared sparks of pleasure throughout their bodies. It was heaven for both of them. Naruto waited at the academy for his teammates. He had to put a henge on his face because he had a stupid smile on his face all morning. No matter what he did, he couldn't stop smiling. Shino and Shikamaru soon arrived. They greeted Naruto but noticed something wrong with him. Naruto Taicho, is something wrong? Shino asked. No, why? Because I am detecting a huge amount of pheromones from you and from somebody else, Shino said. Shikamaru made a hand seal. Kai. Naruto's henge fell off and revealed a widely smiling Naruto. Shikamaru smirked. So, mind telling us how you lost your, Shikamaru asked. Nothing happened last night. Just drop it. Naruto bellowed, blushing furiously. Shino and Shikamaru nodded, not believing Naruto. The academy was full of genins waiting to take the test. Team 7 walked around and saw a fighting on. Naruto went to have a look. He saw the weirdo Minime on the ground with a bruise on his face. His teammate was on the ground beside him. They were looking at two genins guarding the testing room center. Please let us in, the Minime said. We just want to take the Chunin exams. One of the genins laughed. If you can't stand up to us, you aren't going to survive the exams. We've taken it three times and still haven't passed it. You're better off leaving if don't think you're up to it. That's right but you will let me through and remove the genjutsu on the door, an arrogant voice said. Naruto slapped his face. That idiotic Uchiha. Sasuke strutted up with his team to the two genins. The genins smirked. So you saw through the genjutsu eh? The door revealed to be a section of the wall. The genin launched a swift kick at Sasuke. Sasuke lifted his leg to intercept the kick with one of his own. Several things happened in a blink of an eye. The minime came between the two and grabbed their legs with his hands. Behind Sasuke and the other genin, Shino and Naruto had a kanai at their throats. Sasuke. I sometimes wonder why the council favors you. Didn't you see if you kept quiet about the genjutsu, you would have noticed it cut down on competition, Naruto scolded. Sasuke smirked at Naruto. The black eyes gave way to the Sharingan with two tomos in each eye. Now that I have these eye eyes, I'll be able to become much more powerful than you can dream, Sasuke gloated. Naruto rolled his eyes. Sasuke, until you know the meaning of hard work, you will never beat me. Only those who work the hardest will become great. Shino signaled to Shino to release his hostage, Naruto glared at the genin. What are you doing here, Kotetsu? Get back to the Hokage's office, Naruto snapped. Kotetsu grimaced but left along with the other genin. Naruto was about to walk away when he someone tapped his shoulder. He turned to see a Hayuga with long black hair looking at him. Can I help you? Naruto asked. What is your name? The Hayuga asked. Naruto smirked. I'll tell you if you introduce yourself, Naruto answered back cheekily. Neji Hayuga, the Hayuga said. Naruto Uzumaki, nice to meet you, Naruto said. The minime went up to him and struck a pose. I am Rock Lee, student of the Taijutsu master made a guy. Naruto glared at Lee. I have a problem with you and your sensei, Naruto growled. Shino, Shikamaru, Neji, and his teammate were surprised that Naruto had a problem with Lee and Guy. What is it? Lee asked, hoping to fix the problem. Both of you use that goddamn genjutsu whenever you're hugging. You're a menace to society. My roommate was traumatized by the sight of your genjutsu. And he's an elite junin, Naruto bellowed. Everyone's sweat dropped. 
Naruto calmed himself down. I needed to get that out. Team 7 left the stunned group and went inside the testing center. The room was filled with genins from around the land. Naruto noticed with satisfaction that Team 7 had information for 95 of the genins. He let Shino and Shikamaru talk with their old classmates and friends. He went out to make a quick trip to the bathroom. As he did, he spotted Lee and Sasuke fighting. Lee was thoroughly thrashing the Uchiha. Lee kicked Sasuke in the chin causing Sasuke to fly. Lee disappeared and reappeared behind Sasuke. Naruto recognized that move and realized the match is going too far. He jumped in the air at near Junin speeds, grabbed both Jenin's necks, and slammed them hard against the floor. Enough. Naruto demanded. Lee, what were you doing? It's much too early to waste energy doing that move. Save it. What would Guy think if he saw you doing that move for no good reason? Lee started to weep. You're right Naruto-san. Guy-sensei would be ashamed of me. I shall do 5001 armed push-ups to discipline myself. Why don't you just go to the testing center? The exam will start in several minutes, Naruto suggested. Lee nodded and ran to the testing center as a breakneck speed. Naruto turned his attention to Sasuke. Naruto applied more pressure to his neck. You know Sasuke, you might want to follow Lee before I cause you to miss the test because of injury. Naruto let Sasuke go. Sasuke glared at Naruto but followed Lee into the testing center. His team followed Sasuke. Sakura was glaring while Kiba was giving him the thumbs up. Naruto headed toward the testing center to see Sasuke talking with a Konoha genin named Kabuto. That's no fun, you know their names, Kabuto said. He pulled out four cards. First up, Rock Lee. He's a year older than you are and completed 20D rank and 11C rank mission. He's a taijutsu specialist but lacks greatly in ninjutsu and genjutsu. However, his taijutsu skill is beyond chunin and possibly junin. Next three are Konoha's team seven. They are Shikamaru Nara, Shino Aburame, and Naruto Uzumaki. They are in your graduating class but have extremely impressive stats. They have completed 29D rank, 17C rank, 3B rank, and 1A rank missions. They are a well-rounded team with no real weakness in taijutsu, ninjutsu, or genjutsu. Although Shino and Shikamaru have their clan jutsus, they diversified and covered their weakness. The leader Naruto is definitely beyond Junin skill. He excels in ninjutsu and kenjutsu and has defeated an S-rank missing nin named Katsu. Naruto had enough. He grabbed Kabuto's pack of cards and threw them to Shino. Burn them. Shino easily burned the cards to ashes. However the damage was done. Team 7 was identified as the most powerful team in the room. Nearly all the genins were observing Naruto, Shino, or Shikamaru for any weaknesses. Naruto's temper snapped. He jumped up on a desk and released control of Kayubi's chakra for a full minute. The effects were instantaneous. Everyone in the room was gasping as the suffocating demonic chakra drained the will to live from the body. The amount Naruto was releasing was greater than a cage's. Gara was holding his head in pain as a voice screamed in terror. Everyone was on the ground. Some genins were suffering from seizures. Many were asphyxiating from their lungs not working. Naruto reigned in control of the demonic chakra. Now go mind your own goddamn business. He jumped down and checked Shino and Shikamaru. They were a bit winded but were going to be fine. All over the room, the strongest genins were helping their teammates up. Soon only the strongest were conscious, which was around 17 teams. Everyone else was knocked out. A large smokes cloud appeared. Hey worthless bastards. Everyone turned to see a large group of chunins and junins appear in the front of the room. The lead spoke. I'm Ibiki Morino, the lead examiner for the first part of the chunin exam. Ibiki looked around and pointed at Naruto. You there, control yourself before we fail you right where you stand. Naruto nodded. He threw Ibiki a book. My apologies Ibiki-san, I hope this book will be an acceptable conciliatory gift. Ibiki caught it and looked at it. His eyes widened. Most of the male examiners crowded around Ibiki. When they heard Ibiki say the title. Icha Harem Nights, the unedited version with pictures. Ibiki opened the book. A poster opened itself and exposed its contents to the examiners. Nearly all of them had a jet of blood fly out from their nose. A female examiner had enough. She took the book from Ibiki and hid it from the males. She then proceeded to slap Ibiki. 
Ibiki flushed at being caught off guard at that book. All right you little bastards, the first part will be a paper test. You will be spread out randomly to take it. The genins were assigned different seat all over the room. Naruto, Shino, and Shikamaru were relatively near as they were on one area of the room. The rest of the genins that were knocked out from Naruto's chakra was sent to the hospital. The first rule is that you start with 10 points but will lose a point for every question wrong. The second rule is that you pass or fail based on the average of your team's score. The third is that every time you are caught cheating, you will be deducted 2 points. The last is that if a member of your team gets all of his questions wrong, the whole team fails. You have 1 hour, Ibiki said. Begin. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.